Chair, we're now live on YouTube. When you're ready, would you like to start the meeting? Thanks very much, Wendy. So good morning and welcome to East Devon District Council's Virtual Strategic Planning Committee meeting on the 26th of January 2022. I'm the Chair, Councillor Dan Ledger. The meeting today is for information gathering purposes only. Members uh, will not be making any decisions or indications on whether sites should be included in the draft local plan. In the event of a break in the internet connection, Please bear with us as we try to reconnect. After 15 minutes, if we are not able to reconnect, we will consider the meeting adjourned and reconvene at a later date. If you wish to make a comment, please raise your electronic hand and wait to be called. Any members of the public can view the agenda by visiting our website at eastdevon.gov.uk. We'll now start the meeting by doing a roll call of committee members here present. When you hear your name, can you just say present and then mute yourselves again? Over to you, Wendy. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I'll start with you, Councillor Ledger. Present. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Chair, Councillor Davey. Present. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Arnott is going to join us later. Um, Councillor Blake is also going to join us later. So do we have Councillor Bonetta? Councillor Chamberlain. Present. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Councillor Ingham. Sorry, I'll <laughs> unmute. Present, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Councillor Moulding. Present. Thank you. Councillor Pratt. Present, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Rylance will be joining us later. And finally, Councillor Skinner. Present. Thank you. So we're core up for today, Chair. Back to you. Thank you very much. Uh, so we start with agenda item one, which is the running order of the presentations. I don't see any need to, to dwell on that. Are we happy just to note the, the running order? Fantastic. We'll yep, move on. That. Yep. Agenda item two are apologies. Wendy, can you just confirm the apologies for us again, please? Yes. So we've got Councillor Allen, Councillor Howe, Councillor Bailey, Councillor Hayward. Thank you very much. So, there. So then we move on to agenda item three, declarations of interest, and Mrs. Shaw will give us a brief comment uh, regarding declarations for this meeting. Over to you, Mrs. Shaw. Thank you, Chair. Yes, members, as this is a meeting is purely for an information gathering meeting for Strategic Planning Committee, it is still a requirement for members to make their declarations of interest as normal, either when your name is called or as soon as you realise during the meeting. However, if having declared a personal interest in a site, then this is not a requirement when, as this is not a decision-making meeting, issues of bias and predetermination do not apply. Please, when your name is called, if you're de declaring an interest, please identify the relevant site as clearly as possible to assist democratic services. Thank you. Thank you. So, Councillor Ledger, I'll start with you. Um, could I declare a personal interest as Mayor and Chairman of Seton Town Council? Uh, and that's for any sites relating to Seton. Um, and I don't know if there's any Colly Ford sites that obviously abut Seton that might be drawn into it. Thank you. Councillor Davey. None, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Chamberlain. Sorry, couldn't unmute then. Only like yesterday, if they uh, to know that Broadcast um, Ward District Councillor and Parish Councillor for Broadcast Ward, just in case any areas come up, I have had a quick look through, but um, like yesterday, they kept popping up, so I'll just declare that now. Thank you. Councillor Ingham. None, thank you. Councillor Moulding. Sorry, none, thank you. Councillor Pratt. None, thank you, Wendy. And Councillor Skinner. Uh, yes, I'm going to do repeat what I said yesterday and on the basis of uh, I am a member of Plimptree Parish Council, um, although that's likely to come to an end fairly shortly, especially after last night's meeting. 
a personal interest in land owned and submitted in the HeLa process of land I own in Tallaton. And I know it's not within these papers, but I'm making that declaration anyway. Um, a personal interest with a friendship with both FWS Carter and Sons and a personal interest uh, for my friendship with the Stewart family, if they've been named before. So I'm making those declarations quite clear, although neither of those, as far as I'm aware, are within this documentation. But I'm just making them anyway, so as everybody's clear. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Skinner. So uh, back to you, Chair. Thank you very much. As other members join the meeting later on, I will call them for, for their declarations as well. So we move on to the main part of the agenda, which is agenda item four, presentations from developers and landowners. Um, I don't believe our service lead has anything that he wishes to add today. So we just go straight into the presentations and I'll pass over to Mr. John, representing Clinton Devon Estates. Thank you, Chair, members. Um, so this is the site at, um, on the edge of Clay Common, Seaton. Uh, would you, thank you, Wendy. Um, would you mind moving on to the constraints and opportunities slide for me, please? Thank you. So this is the site, um, just to orient you um, generally, it's on the, the western edge of Seaton. Um, uh, you can see the site there um, edged, in, uh, edged in red. Um, it uh, sits <coughs> immediately to the rear of a line of sort of modern-ish houses, mid-20th century houses. Um, and it's access there. You can see the access shown by that double-headed red arrow. Uh, and that is a properly laid out road um, with uh, wide visibility splays onto the beer road. Um, so um, the site essentially sits um, immediately to the rear of those houses in a corner of Clay Common. Now, Clay Common is, is an, an area of open land. Um, in generally, it rises off this off this slide to the north um, in height, but this area of land is actually a low-lying corner. Uh, you'll see there to the west of the of the site is a formal quarry, and that is marked by a very dense area of woodland. Um, the nature of the topography of this uh, this site, you've got the beer road running, you can see there to the south and west and east, um, is actually this site is essentially invisible from the surrounding area um, because of its topography, the screening effect of the of the woodland and the trees, um, and the, um, the 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 sort of uh, the topography of the uh, of the road, which is actually lower, um, very much lower. Um, so uh, it's a small site. Um, uh, and it's very well screened. Uh, and, and we take the view that um, this is a, an opportunity. Again, it's uh, on the edge of one of your more important proposed settlements in the district local plan. Uh, and it's an opportunity to help um, the authority to meet its um, requirements for small sites, which will, um, as, as requ is required under the MPPF. Can I have the, um, the, uh, the layout? So, it's got an, a, um, a very straightforward capacity of, of about five dwellings. Um, and a, you can see an approximate layout there, simply uses the existing access, uh, which doesn't really need to be altered in any way, uh, to, and to provide a vehicle access into the site. Uh, and the site is able to benefit from, uh, from, the, from those extre um, existing screening characteristics. Um, and one thing I didn't mention is, mention is actually, it's, it's, although it's part of the wider clay common, it's effectively a paddock, a subdivided plot within that, within the Clay Common area. Uh, and what we've seen is obviously the, you can see on that layout on the northwestern side, there's an existing tree stroke hedge line, which is there, and that can be retained and the, the development can sit within it. The distances between the dwellings that we've shown and those houses to the immediate south um, are, are sufficient to deal with any um, uh, potential privacy immunity type issues, you know, 22 metres, etc. Um, so we think this is a, a quite simply a, a, a quite straightforward site for um, five or so houses, um, which is able to sit very comfortably in the landscape. Um, so that's really it. Thanks very much for your presentation, Mr. John. Committee members, do you have any questions? Councillor Skinner, start with you, please. Uh, only just a very quick one, Mr. John, and thank you for that presentation. Uh, obviously, it's on the edge. 
Are there any constraints regarding calling it clay common? Are there any constraints I might just ask at this time regarding it being common land? Has it got any designation of anything or is it not? No, no. I mean, the land, it, it, um, the land is, uh, does sit within your existing um, coastal preservation area, um, but actually it doesn't meet any of the, um, the landscape objectives of the CPA by virtue of its location. Um, in terms of clay common as a whole, um, it's not. It's not a common. It's not common land. It's currently used to pasture, and it's just five dwellings. Yes. Yeah. Thank uh, you. You could push that, but clearly you wouldn't want to. I don't think in this location. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Moley. We come to you, please. Yes, Chair. Just a question regarding its situation, the way it sits behind the existing properties in Beer Road. Mm. Would it not be considered to be backland development? I think from a technical point of view, um, backland development would be where it sits within the, uh, where development sits within the immediate rear of uh, existing houses. And strictly speaking, this is development in the open, would be an, an extension of, uh, of the, the settlement. Um, I understand your point. I don't think this is, I don't think from a strict planning point of view, you would view this as backland development um, in that you're not trying to, insert stuff towards the rear of existing properties you're actually doing it in the on the edge of the countryside um but character wise um it is obviously to the rear of those houses any further questions from the committee i, I think I, all i'd ask is how would you keep it in in, in keeping with with the rest of the street if you look at Beer Road currently, mm -hmm. they are all detached houses, large mm -hmm. front gardens mm -hmm. going all the way up mm -hmm. uh, Beer Road. Mm -hmm. um, and then you are provo proposing five new dwellings mm -hmm. uh, with a lot smaller immediate space to yeah. the frontage. Yeah, I, I, think, I, think, I think you would say, um, actually the size of those dwellings on, on Beer Road are very large. You know, they are, I don't know, but they probably five plus uh, bedrooms. They've got substantial grounds. Um, and by comparison, the, those unit, the dwellings that we've shown, they look, they do look much smaller than they would be, but actually they've still got, uh, they've still got very generous gardens. Um, so, you know, these are very much more what we'd expect to see for good quality family housing with decent gardens today rather than these very, very large gardens, which were um, emblematic of, of a sort of period in time in the past uh, where you have those very gardens. So I don't, this isn't in any way a small, <laughs> believe it or not, a small, you know, uh, kind of urban-esque type development. It's actually quite a generous development. It just doesn't look it because of the, the, the comparison with those very large plots nearby. Yeah. Thank you very much for that, Mr. John. Um, I think with no further questions, we just, oh, Councillor David, we'll go to you, please. Got him right in the last second. Yes, thank you, Chair. Yeah, I, I just uh, got this up on Google Maps just to have a look at it. Um, yeah, my only concern is that uh, it's the site you're looking about, uh, looking at, if I'm correct, um, is part of a larger sort of area um, bounded by houses on two sides and I'm, I'm just concerned that that may be an important recreation area. Uh, could you just comment on that? No, I, uh, okay. Um, if there is any recreational use, it's informal, as it were. You know, it's dog walking fields and perhaps on land that they shouldn't be walking dogs over, which is not uncommon, obviously, but it's not a formal uh, recreational uh, area of land at all. It's only use for horses currently. No, it's only use for horses currently. Thanks, Chair. Um, so with that, Mr. John, thank you very much for your okay. presentation. Mm -hmm. so really appreciated, and um, we look forward to welcoming you this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I know we're already 15 minutes early, but Wendy, is Mr. Sydenham in the, in the meeting? No, not yet. We will give him a quick call um, and see if he can join early. Would you like me to sing again, Chair? Yeah, if you never walk alone again, please. Well, never Philip. walk. Oh, I, I could do Widdick and Fair. Old Uncle Tom Cobbley and all. We could do that one because there's many members here who would actually be able to join in with that one. Yeah. 
Andrew, are you coming in on backing vocals? Tom Pierce, Tom Pierce, <laughs> lend me your grey mare. <laughs> you literally asked for that chair, you know, <laughs> so you can't come back. <laughs> The best part, it, it, it's recorded for life. You can't get rid of it. <laughs> It'll go viral, I reckon, that <laughs> by tomorrow evening. My great, 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 great grandfather's mentioned in that one, Peter Davy. Is he oh, really? Yeah. yeah. And is that is that true? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not as far as I'm aware, anyway. Right, let's have a quiz then. Who remembers all the names? Oh, no. I used to know Jan Stewart. Jan Stewart. Peter Brewer. Peter Brewer. Peter Daniel Davey, Gurney. Harry Hawk. <laughs> and several others. <laughs> All right, I'll give you the names. <laughs> Bill Brewer, Jan Stewart, Stewart, Peter Gurney, Peter Davy, Daniel Whitten, Harry Hawk, and Uncle Tom Copley and all. I've got all the words here. That's who I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> they should be on this committee. They might have turned up, mightn't they? That we we <laughs> a committee. We could all I'm change really we could all change our names. I don't want to hear many of those. Oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been fun, change our names, all call ourselves a name. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> yes. Go in that road. <laughs> oh dear. Oh. Oh, well, I've got my tickets for the Chelsea-Liverpool final at Wembley. Mr. We Simpson here now. Oh. He's just joining us. We're all serious again now, aren't we? Just as well. Good morning, Mr. Sindenham. Can I just check you can hear me okay? Hello, Alan. You've just muted yourself again. I'm sorry. There we are. Hear me okay? Yeah, yes. that's fantastic. Perfect. Uh, welcome to the meeting. Um, sorry, we're a little bit earlier than, than anticipated. Yeah, no uh, problem. Yes, then obviously rattled through his presentation. Yeah, <laughs> it was quite quick. So um, just to welcome you to the meeting, this is Alan Sidman. He's representing Heritage Property, uh, representing the landowners of land at Barnard Hill Lane in Seaton. Um, I do need to, sorry, I need to raise a further interest. This land uh, is directly in front of my, my house. Um, so thank you for that, Wendy. Uh, but you. over to you, Alan, whenever you're ready, you have 15 minutes. Yeah, no, I'll keep it very short. Um, thank you, everybody. Um, my name's Alan Sydenham of Heritage Property Consulting. Uh, we act on behalf of the Arborn family who own the land at... Um, Barnard Hill Lane in Seaton, which has been identified as the proposed residential development allocation for approximately 60 dwellings, reference seat 02 in the working draft local plan and inset map for the town. The land immediately adjoins the existing built up area boundary of the town, approximately one mile from the seafront and central area where the town's Tesco supermarket is located. There are a number of other smaller convenience retail facilities, the town's primary school and a GP surgery all near the site. There's existing housing along the southern and eastern boundaries, including Poplar Tree Drive and Prince Charles Way. The land slopes gently from northwest to southeast and is currently in agricultural use with established trees and hedges around the site boundary. This ensures the site is well screened from adjoining housing, minimizing the potential visual and landscape impacts of any new development that's built in the area. Initial discussions have taken place with local highway engineers and recommendations made on potential vehicular and pedestrian access arrangements for any new development, 
This could include forming an improved and safer access onto Poplar Tree Drive to avoid significant impacts on the existing Barnards Hill Lane site frontage. There's also the possibility of footpath connections into adjoining housing to the east. There are regular bus services available from stops close to the site, which run into the town centre and from there on to Sidmouth and Exeter. Any new development could provide appropriate levels of affordable housing and public open space, together with financial contributions towards off-site improvements to existing town facilities that are required. The landowners have already been in discussion with a number of potential delivery partners to bring forward an appropriate and sensitively designed development scheme once the proposed draft allocation has been confirmed. The site is therefore available and deliverable within a suitable timeframe. Although there have been a number of sites in the town suggested for potential future development, we consider the land at Barnards Hill Lane to be one of the most appropriate and least constrained in terms of its location, proximity to existing facilities and sustainable transport links. This has been reflected in the suitability ranking of four given to the site by the council. We are therefore fully in support of its allocation for development in the emerging East Devon local plan. Uh, and if you've got any questions in relation to the site, I'll do my best to answer them for you. Thank you very much for that presentation. Um, are there any questions from the committee? I know I have a couple. Councillor Pratt, over to you, please. Sorry, Mr. Sidney, I didn't uh, catch the number of values you're proposing off of this site. Uh, the site area um, would suggest 60 is achievable, but there's been no um, uh, proving layouts uh, yet to, um, to to show whether it would be uh, more or less than that. But with the, the council have done a, um, a quick analysis based on the um, six or seven acres that uh, the site area comprises. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Pratt. Uh, Councillor Skinner, we go to you, please. Um, I was just going to ask that question, actually, and, and so it's been answered. Thank you. I'll, I'll leave that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ms Sidnam, what is the proposed uh, access to this site currently? The proposed or the current, did you say? The, the proposed uh, I know the current's currently off the, the single track up Barnard Hill. Exactly. Now, the intention is to bring um, an access um, of, of well, the, the junction of Poplar Tree Drive with Barnard Hill Lane. So it's just in the bottom corner, the southern corner of the uh, of the site. There's an existing T junction there at the moment, um, but there's um, plenty of room to, um, to to create a new uh, access with appropriate visibility. Um, yeah. Uh, and that would obviously avoid the need for significant disruption up uh, Barnard's Hill Lane, um, where the existing access point in the northern corner of the site is, is located. Okay, um, um, also, just uh, another quick one from me. The, you wouldn't have thought it, but obviously being on top of the hill, but uh, there is actually quite a lot of flooding issues with um, all the rainwater off the, the adjacent fields coming down through and through the allotments, there okay. is actually uh, full of, is there, well, it's more so for later on, but mitigations that you, you plan, do you feel that you could um, cater that within the development? Uh, standard residential development, you would anticipate that you would have to mitigate, um, certainly to greenfield runoff rates for the existing um, scheme. But um, if there are issues um, associated with adjoining sites, then I see no reason why any scheme couldn't be, um, uh, you know, designed in a way that would help to mitigate that as well. Fantastic. Thank you. Councillor Pratt, we'll go back to you, please. Thank you. Um, Councillor Pratt, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can now. Yeah. Uh, as far as uh, access is concerned to the site, are there any rights issues that you need to deal with? Uh, in what respect, sorry? Rights of way onto the public highway. Um, not as far as we're aware. Um, the, uh, 
um, uh, land ownership uh, position has been investigated uh, and the uh, extent of the existing adopted highway um, has been um, confirmed. And so we're working with both those parties to um, uh, create an appropriate access that can serve that sort of size of, uh, of development. Thank you. Thanks very much. Any further questions? No, okay. Um, thank you very much for your time today, Mr. Mr. Tim. Really helpful presentation. Um, I know it's appreciated by, by the membership. No um, problem. I will see you at uh, 10 past two. We'll, I, I will do uh, my next one. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. See you then. Okay, cheers. Bye. Cheers. We're now 20 minutes early, I think, for, for Mr. Richard Ayres. Um, what I'd like to do, if possible, members, is just take a 10 minute break just so that it starts bringing us back up to time and we can get Mr. Mustairs on the phone. <laughs> what about my singing? I can't, I can't deal with it for... <laughs> I, I suggest you sing and we take... The rest of us take a break, Phil. That would be <laughs> you all go on mute and I'll sing to myself then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you mean, yeah? <laughs> so if uh, all members, we, we could join back at 20 to 11. That would be fantastic. We'll try and get Mr. Ayres back into the room for just slightly early. Thank you. OK, we'll put the slide up. Good morning, Mr. Eyre and Mr. Hutton. We're just currently taking a break. We'll be back at 10.40. Okay, thank you. Thanks. If you can just make sure you're muted because we're, um, we're still live um, on YouTube, so um, any conversations will be heard.
So thank you for that. Um, we are now back and I'd like to hand over to Mr. Richard Ayres and Graham Hutton from Baker Estates for their presentations. Um, gentlemen, you have 15 minutes whenever you're ready. Uh, thank, you very to you. thank you. Thank you very much, Chair, and just the briefest of introdu introductions from me. Would it be possible for me to be given permission to share the screen, Wendy, to put the um, presentation up? Yes, I've made you co-host. Oh, lovely. So thank you, you very just, much. Um, uh, click the green button. Got it. There we are. Hope you can. Hope you can all see that. So, say I'm, I'm Graham Hutton, uh, Development Director at Baker Estates. My colleague Richard Eyre, who's our Land and Planning Director, will, will take you through our presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Graham. Um, so, just to introduce um, Baker Estates, I'm sure most of you would be familiar with us. Um, I think you heard about our Gittisham site. Uh, yesterday in, in the round um, in relation to discussions over Honiton. Um, we've previously done two sites at Seaton, one at Rowan, Rowan Drive and the other at Barnard Hill. Um, so delighted to achieve them working um, with the Town Council um, and ward members, etc. So we're uh, looking forward hopefully to some, some further uh, developments. Um, next slide, please, Graham. Thank you. So this is the um, slide which you'll be familiar with, just to confirm the land we're talking about here. So it's, it's all of the pink area, seat 03 there. Um, the majority of seat 05. Um, there's a small part we don't um, control, which uh, is in that sort of rectangle there. Um, the good news is that that's with a promoter who's looking to bring forward some employment types of uses, which will go along well with uh, what we're looking to do, which is more sort of residential and, and recreational and other opportunities. Um, it's worth pointing out that we do control and access um, through what is known as the Longhouse, um, just to the north of that um, parcel there. That, that access previously has had a planning permission, it's now lapsed, but it just it does show that there, that is an appropriate uh, position to bring an access through um, from Hare Path Road into the eastern parcel. We've also got the frontage onto Collarford Road um, at the other end of the site, so uh, access is available from both sides. Um, seat 03, um, we can bring access in off um, Hare Path Road, uh, possibly some through our own drive development. We're not looking to bring access through off the A3052 um, from the top there. Um, in terms of the assessment, we, we agree. We think the assessment of seat 05, the green area, makes all perfect sense. Um, it's pretty low lying ground. It's, it's well related to the urban area. Um, so it would make a sensible um, urban extension. Um, the pink area, seat 03, um, we have had a specialist landscape consultant look at that, a very experienced one, um, Claire Brock, first look at that. Um, I think her conclusion was that the, the, the sort of landscape impact in the assessment um, by the council, having had a more detailed look perhaps, um, is perhaps overstated. Um, certainly the east and the southern parts are not particularly high and prominent. Um, and actually there's quite a lot of urban influence there. It's on the, it's on the edge of the urban area of uh, Seaton and you see it in that context as you drive into Seaton from the north off the A3052. You've very much got the background of the urban area. So um, there's perhaps more urban influence than the, the council's you know, initial assessment um, has given to that. And, and that may be a bit of differentiation between the Eastern and the Western fields um, in that context as well. So. In, in Claire's view, um, the eastern field perhaps could also be green and the western field um, could perhaps be yellow, given that the main comments related to um, landscape impact. And, um, you know, that, that's, how, that's how she regarded it. it um, we also um, asked Claire to look at um, CETO 2, the yellow land, which you've, you've heard from, heard about just before the break. Um, the view on that one is that that is probably more prominent. Um, it's got more of a um, rural feel to it. Barnard Hill, um, in that part of Barnard Hill, is, is, is got quite a strong rural influence um, compared to you know the more urban fringe elements of our of our land, CETO three there. So, um, so in, in preference, you know, our, our view is that if you, if you were picking one or the other, you'd go for um, O three over O two. Um, particularly when you've got to think about the, the access points into O2, which is going to require quite a lot of engineering, which would um, uh, be a big factor in developing that site out. Um, 
will come as be a recurring thing through this, but we think there's a big advantage in planning 05 and 03 together, um, a package of really good complementary uses, employment, housing, recreation, environmental um, enhancements that can be done as a package, as opposed to just um, perhaps doing one or one or the other or bringing them forward um, separately. Next slide, please, Graham. A um, bit more context. So um, this is the existing local plan uh, proposals map. So you've got the red patched land there. Um, so the land's been allocated, or part, part of the land's been allocated for um, employment and recreation uses for quite some time. Um, that's not managed to come forward. There's been some viability and uh, access issues. The, land, the land's landlocked. Um, but as part of our wider proposals, we do have the ability to um, bring something forward there and deliver a good good range of uses um, around around Hare Path Road. Um, also worth noting on on that plan. Um, back to the previous one, Graham. Um, if you look at the constraints to um, Seaton, there's, there's very strong constraints east and west of the town, um, and obviously to the south where you've got the sea. Um, so kind of the only logical um, direction for growth to meet Seaton's needs is, is out towards the north. Um, I think we are very respectful of the green wedge policy in there, so very mindful of that, which is important to um, Seaton and Colleton and Colliford members. Um, so, you know, we need to respect that, but we think we can do that as part of our development proposals. I'll put this, this one in because this, this was a, 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 an emerging uh, proposals map from the previous local plan. So what that shows in the pink area there um, was this land, uh, uh, the bigger, the, the site um, was considered uh, suitable through the um, uh, through the previous version uh, for development, it didn't carry forward into the final version, uh, but not because it wasn't suitable, it's was because it wasn't needed at the time. So, um, so there is some history. There's, there's plenty of actually planning history on this, but I, I won't go through that, all that today. Um, and then just worth noting on that, the two brown hatched areas are our previous developments, so Rowan Drive there and Garden um, Barnard Hill, uh, which are now built out and delivered uh, homes, including affordable homes um, in the town. Uh, some members will have seen this before. We presented this to the men members advisory panel um, a year or so ago. So um, this one, this plan shows approximately 130 houses on the lighter green area to the east of Hare Path Road. Um, we're assuming roughly 50% houses and 50% bungalows um, and a good, good range of house types within that. Um, the darker grey is a um, the commercial area that we were talking about before, which is um, we, there's a party looking to bring that forward. Um, which when we can work with them and facilitate that so that we attract a good range of mixed uses um, and then we've been talking about um, some sports pitches on the west side of Fair Path Road um, they're shown indicatively on there so they may not be in that sort of orientation or exactly in that sort of form but it shows you know roughly how they would fit um, so obviously open to the suggestions and, and to looking to bring forward sports pitch enhancements which has been um, long wanted in the town we know um, so this is one of the reasons why we need both sides of um, the road to come into the um, to the allocation, really, as a comprehensive scheme. Um, but for the reasons we talked about earlier, um, we also think that there's scope to bring some um, development in in around this as well. So there's there's, there's scope for development on that western parcel, um, as well as part of uh, the proposals um, to create the, the the mixed use scheme that we've been talking about. We can still create the green backdrop to it on the western on the western end. Um, so that you've got the, you've got the big green backdrop to, to the development. Next one, please, Graham. Uh, just to rattle through some constraints, so flood, flood maps, we're outside the flood zone, so that's quite straightforward. Um, this plan shows uh, back flight paths, so the blue arrows are the main, is the main flight path, and you just, so as you see, that goes to the north of our land rather than through it, or just right through the top corner. The green arrows um, go along the northern and the southern boundaries of our land that we're promoting. Um, There's their secondary paths, and we can work with that and, and, and plan those. Um, and the next slide shows a broad sort of mitigation strategy. So we'll have buffers and enhancements all along the northern and southern boundaries of our development. Um, and the green area is an opportunity to make some enhancements. So um, all in all, we've done lots and lots of surveys. Um, have, have some conversations with Natural England and we think, you know, that we can adequately or well look after the bats 
as part of any of our proposals. Um, I spoke about the sports pitches on the west side of Hare Path Road. Um, this just shows some examples of how sports pitches can come forward on land that's not flat. Um, actually, there's some advantages in, in doing that. Um, you obviously got to create the plateaus, but around that you can have the green banks, which make great vantage points for spectators, and they can look nice. It doesn't look overly engineered. And you see these sorts of things all over all over the place, and we put some examples on there just to show how show how it can work. This is a um, plan produced by our landscape consultant that I, I mentioned earlier. I mean, it's hand drawn, but it's still taken quite a lot of thought and an analysis viewing from uh, public vantage points, um, A and B, etc., and those sorts of things. So. Um, Six and three are the residential areas, um, as we've spoken about before, um, within the CETO five, four is the commercial, as we've spoken about before, which we can help to facilitate. Um, the view was taken that the area five there on the west side of Hare Path um, is suitable. Um, you can, uh, if you had development there, it would be, you'd see it in the context of um, the urban area and could still look good. And then that still leaves space along the rest of the site for sports pitches, buffers for bats the green wedge uh allows for the green wedge so that you know the, the the northern corridor where we're we're making allowance for bats that also can serve as a um landscape edge to uh to the to the to the town and respect the uh, the green wedge and separation of the um uh seaton and colliford which we obviously know is very important to people locally so in our view that that ticks ticks a lot of boxes um and provides a good range of uses while respecting the um you know, the constraints we've got to work with. Um, so I'll summarise that on the, on the next couple of slides. So just in summary, um, part of the land already allocated in the adopted local plan, um, which hasn't hasn't come forward. Um, we, we probably agree with the analysis on CETO 5 to the east of Fairpath Road. Um, we think the, the having looked at it in more detail now, the landscape impact of 03 is perhaps overstated in the, in the commentary. Uh, we think the eastern and the southern parts of that in particular would be seen more in the context of uh, Seaton and as urban fringe influences. Three minutes uh, left. Okay, thank you. And um, uh, would be seen uh, and, and, is, and is preferable in, in its character than um, seat 02. Uh, we can protect the, protect the back corridors uh, along there in the way I've, I've described and we've had discussions and with Natural England and um, confident we can do that through an application. Um, we can acknowledge and respect the purpose of the green wedge by um, creating those buffers along the northern boundary and creating some permanence to that. Um, and it allows the comprehensive planning of the north side of Seaton. And then just the opportunities and benefits on the last one. Um, so land in one control, um, we control all the land apart from the, the area indicated where we, we can work with, with them to facilitate things. Uh, bringing in other landowners makes things much more complicated and uh, makes delivery much more difficult. So, you know, we, we have a strong position to deliver, which I know is important, going to be important to members. Um, it's a mixed-use opportunity working with, with the adjoining owners. We can facilitate what, what they're looking to bring forward. We can facilitate sports pitches along with other environmental landscape and recreational op opportunities. Um, we've acknowledged that there, there needs to be some landscaping at the top of CETO 3. To, to create the green backdrop, um, that development is acceptable further to the east and south. Um, we can deliver a range of housing opportunities like we've done at Rowan Drive and Barnards Hill. Um, so that includes you know, everything from uh, starter homes all the way up to um, downsizing opportunities and everything in between and along with affordable housing. Um, and overall, it's a chance to create a well-planned sustainable gateway for mixed uses, it, it ticks the three pillars of um, sustainability, social, economic, and environmental. So it's got um, benefits in all of those respects. And for all those reasons, um, to allow the comprehensive planning of uh, the north side of Seaton to live, to live all, that, all those things, um, we, would, we would love the um, council to allocate both um, seat three and 05. And we think there's lots of benefits in doing so. So I think that's it. And Ms. Graham's got anything to add? No, absolutely. I think it's it can be delivered. It's deliverable, and there's no technical hurdles. It's really important that it can be done in the right way. So we, we think it's a great opportunity. But both of us happy to answer any questions. Shall I shall I stop the share? No chair. Yes, please, if you could.
Um, Wendy, I need to declare another interest. They've mentioned uh, Barnard Hill Lane development. That's also opposite my house. I'm looking at it right now. So um, just declare that as a personal interest. Councillor Skinner, we go to you, please. Thank you. Um, thanks for the representation or presentation you guys gave. It's uh, really interesting. Um, and obviously, you, you, it sounds to me like, and just, just to clarify as a point, that it's mixed use regarding, is it both employment and housing? Or were, were you talking about the employment being on somebody else's land? I just want to clear that point up just as a first starters. Graham or whoever. I, yeah, Richard, I think that's best for you to answer. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so I, th I think we're, we're very much looking to facilitate the um, the commercial land um, that's not in our control, but we know that they've got plenty of ideas um, who are, and they are talking to officers about, about those ideas. So it, it works pretty well in terms of, um, uh, you know, owners and um, promoters working together. There's very good scope for delivery of a mixed use scheme there. Um, you know, and, that, and they are looking to deliver those employment opportunities. So, um, you know, our ability to potentially to facilitate that would uh, would, would marry pretty well. And, and so, assist with the access, Richard, as well. Yeah, the, exactly. Yeah. The land that we control, you know, yeah. makes it easier to bring forward that employment. So the answer to the question is it's it's all housing. Your land is all housing. Uh, is well, that I the think... answer to the question? Because you said facilitate with others. So you're alluding to the fact that the others are going to providing the employment. So I just want to know what I want to know is if you're intending to do, I understand the process, mm. you're intending to put in housing and then because my, I'm going to lead to my next question as to many houses as it is. Well, I'm not going to know the answer to that question if some of it is employment. We're looking as part of a, a mixed use allocation. Um, and, and that's it's common for, for allocations to be on, on more than one land ownership. On, on our land, we're looking to deliver housing and recreational and environmental opportunities okay. uh, and then and looking to facilitate employment land. But we've got a willing promoter on the other land, so, and that's what they want to do. So it's um, so all in all, it should it should work pretty well. But yeah, in the range. So number of houses then, guys? We're looking about 200 to 220 in total, both sides of um, Hare Path Road. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that, Councillor Skinner. Councillor Davey, we go to you, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I mean, you've um, obviously considered back corridors and so on. I wonder um, how much uh, biodiversity net gain you envisage being able to provide. Um, and I was going to ask about recreation space, but you just mentioned it. Um, in addition to sports pitches, um, do you envisage any other recreation space? Do you anticipate planting any trees, for instance? Um, yeah, if you could comment on that, thank you. Um, I think, think those two things are linked in some ways, and that part of achieving a biodiversity net gain will be to plant some trees. Um, so, so yes, we will um, we will need to, and we'll provide for a biodiversity net gain, and, and within that area. Um, you know, there's plenty of land where we can um, can bring forward the, the, the net gain. Um, you'll appreciate that's quite a detailed assessment in terms of working exa exactly what the current position is, and, and working through the uh, the metric in order to work out what what, the, what what it needs to be in order to achieve the required gain. But um, you know, we've got plenty of scope within that land in order to achieve a biodiversity net gain, which will include. Um, planting some trees, which, um, you know, I've mentioned in the presentation that we're expecting to plant some trees, particularly to create that green backdrop to um, to the development. And as well as within the development, I think, you know, obviously within the NPPF and whatever, there's an expectation you'll have, you'll have trees planned, you know, within the streets and, and as part of the development. So we're fully on board with that. I think I think the key point on that, Councillor Davey, is that a, a lot of work on, on bats and biodiversity net gain has been done, such that we're convinced that natural England will be satisfied through a uh, an application process but it's possible to achieve the net gain within the land ownership it's not a not an offsetting uh, circumstance it, it, it's done that and because it's required for so many other reasons such as landscape and, and green wedge and the like yeah thank you very much for that um i'd just like to welcome councillor ryan to the meeting councillor ryan do you have any declarations that you wish to make at this point none today thank you chair i'm th sorry for being late no, thank you very much um we go back to Councillor Pratt, please. Thank you. Um, just on numbers, you mentioned to Councillor Skinner that you were looking at 200 to 250 dwellings. Um, 
from the information I've got on uh, the papers uh, we've been given by the planning uh, officers, um, the figure was 150 dwellings and then land for employment development. Uh, can you just confirm then that the, the, the numbers for the, for the dwellings, please? Yeah, I think, think the 150 related to um, seats 05, so that was like land to east of Hare Path Road. Um, yes. And I think, I think, and then it refers to 100, seat 03, it refers to potential 128, but I think given the other types of uses and, um, you know, the landscaping and the environmental and recreation opportunities we're looking at, we think the capacity will be less than that. So, um, so we think that's going to be perhaps 60 or 70 on that side. Um, and then perhaps 150 on the, on the east side of Hare Path Road, something of that order anyway. Yes, I see. Thank you. I just tease out a little bit more information on you, your plans for the Green Wedge and how you wish to uh, respect that. I know that obviously you've put in um, site allocations for, for both <laughs> sides of Colleyford and Seaton. Uh, I, I forgive me the the names. I know one C, C to no five, but I don't know the Collyfords off off the top of my head. How do you plan to, if if both allocations were to come forward, how would you respect the green wedge? Well, I think there's obviously a, a wider context here, which in in um, very aware that members there's not going to be too many easy decisions from members um, to to pick sites from. Um, so that's that broader context, and as I identified in terms of growth options for Seaton, it can only really go north. Um, but that's not to say the green wedge isn't important. So as, as part of that, we can um, introduce some planting, some screening um, along that northern boundary, which will also serve, you know, serve the bats pretty well as well. So it, it, will, it will retain that sort of physical separation between Seaton and Colliford. We can do that as part of um, our proposals. Um, and, and as you see, we're not looking to bring bring development that's always going to bring us all the way up to the a 3052 or anything like that so it's um it is keeping that separation okay but it might be a little bit narrower in geographical terms but you can still retain that feeling of separation between Colliford and Seaton and, and create a permanent edge to the you know to the gateway of Seaton um, which I think will be important and a, a permanent well-planned gateway to Seaton I think that's that's really important I think I think the ecological constraints should be um, a reassurance chair because um, any any planning application would need to respect that as an as an absolute priority and that is going to lead to a significant um, area of, of greenery there and particularly with biodiversity net gain being dealt within the um, boundaries of the site um, it, you know it will be significant. Thank you very much. Uh, does any other members have anything they wish to add? Mr. Freeman, you wish to come in. Um, thank you, Chair. I was going to keep keep quiet, but I think we've got uh, a few minutes spare, haven't we, before the next speaker? So um, I was just going to ask the presenters if they wanted to say a bit about viability for the benefit of, of members. Obviously, you've talked about the constraints of the site and this aspiration to deliver sports pitches on the site. I'm just wondering what implications they have for the viability of the scheme and its ability to deliver infrastructure and affordable housing. And perhaps members would like to hear a little bit about that. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Ed. Yeah, we, we have we have started talking to you, as you know, about um, uh, viability issues. Um, and uh, in the context of what I what I really showed in relation to the members advisory panel uh, previously. So. Um, I think a lot of it, it will depend on the, on the details as we get into it. So um, there's obviously the land for the sports pitches, which is a factor. Um, but it's a question of whether the council are willing, whether they want to um, use perhaps oil money or other, you know, other money available in order to, to bring those pitches forward, um, which we, we've not quite got to the answer to that one, but that's obviously very relevant to it. Um, and we, we can explore the... Um, the, de the details with you perhaps once we've got a, um, a full idea of um, you know what we're jointly looking to achieve out of, of the site in terms of housing numbers employment uh, numbers of sports pitches how we en envisage them being delivered there will be a viable scheme out of there um, it's just um, yeah those are the details we need to discuss with you as part of the um, the ongoing process I think I think it's also fair to say of course that the um, 
uh, Rich has spoken a lot about the way that a well-planned development can be looked at holistically if both sides of Hairpath Road come through, and that's going to assist greatly, Ed, in, in so far as the, you know the deliverability of more of the things that the town may wish. So, um, yeah, that the, the extent of the allocation will uh, significantly impact that, and we need to talk in more detail. Yeah, but as as Richard said, there's certainly going to be viable schemes there. It's in in, in what form. Okay, thanks. I just wanted to make sure members understood the the implications of the scale of the site and the, the level of housing development for delivering your aspirations. Thanks. Thank you very much for that. Um, I think with no other members wishing to speak, we'd just like to say thank you to, to Richard and Graham for the presentation today. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, all the best. Goodbye. Thank you. Um, so now I'd like to, to welcome Charles Walker to the meeting. Charles, are you with us? Hi, Dan. Yeah. Is that coming up? Yeah, that's fantastic. You have 15 minutes. The floor is yours whenever you wish. Great. Thank you. Is Wendy doing the slides? I'm happy to do them or I've made you co-host so you can share. It's up to you. Uh, it'd be great if you could, Wendy, and then it just saves us a job on the clicking. Thank you. Yep. Bear with me. Let me I just need to open it. Fine. So just, just whilst that is opening, in terms of introductions, I'm Giles Walker, land manager here at Wayne Homes. I've got with me Simon Coles from Tetra Tech, um, which has covered off uh, planning and design angles. And we've also had input from Tyler Grange to cover off ecology and landscape constraints. So I'll just wait for the first slide to pop up. Sorry, just opening. Great. OK, so this is Budley 2 um, Wayne Homes have an interest in the site. So if we flip straight into page two, please, Wendy. Um, I thought what's really important to kick off with is, is about Wayne Homes. We're an independent house builder. Um, we've got three offices in the country. Um, our extra office covers Devon and Cornwall, and we, we build around 400 to 500 homes per year. I thought it, it was good to show that we, we've recently had a rebrand and we've got to focus on quality. And the pictures in front of you here, we've got our latest scheme in Ivy Bridge. We've got 178, 187 houses there, um, all, of, all of mixed facade um, to create interest. They're sustainable. Um, it's a lovely scheme. And I, I, I'd welcome you to go and see the quality down there. And there's some pictures below showing the show house. Um, in contrast to that, we've, we've recently been working with the Duchy at Nansleden in Newquay. And, and this is re really where we've, we've changed in terms of our sustainability curve. Um, what we've created down there uh, ranges from uh, fruit trees on the streets with nut bushes, which have been labelled as edible streets. Our thermal efficiency is 15% higher than building regs. Um, we focused in on our embodied carbon. So our, our block work there uses 96% recycled aggregate. Um, we've used natural stone and, and sourced local materials where we can. So we are building quality. Um, and with that in mind, it, it, it's, it's very important in the context of Budley. Um, and then being an independent house builder um, gives us the ability to perform uh, on site. We aren't looking to get an outline consent here and, and flip the site, which creates a slowdown in the, in the process. We will be submitting an application that we will be building out as soon as we can. Um, we've, we've had a good look over the site. As I, I mentioned, we've got our consultants with us. Um, there are no major infrastructure uh, constraints to this site um, in terms of our service inquiries. Um, drainage and services are, are all there, ready to go. Um, and this gives us the confidence that we'll be able to provide a policy compliant um, scheme in terms of affordable housing delivery. Um, the viability on the, on the site will be strong. So we'd be confident, you know, at the current level of 50% that that is deliverable um, combined with biodiversity gain uh, on site. So I'm gonna hand over to Simon now and we're gonna move on to the next slide. That's right, Wendy. 
Thanks, Charles. Good morning, members. Um, just picking up on uh, that slide, really, it sets the context for consideration of uh, any future development proposals in Budley. Um, picking up firstly on the role and function of the settlement, well, um, it's a tier three settlement, um, a local centre. Uh, that means it has a wider than local role. Um, in terms of your role and function of settlements documents, it, it, it has all 10 uh, local facilities that, that, that you're looking for and three of the eight strategic facilities, including an hourly bus service, uh, hospital and emergency service provision. Um, it's got to say it's, it's got, got a very close relationship and functionality with uh, Exmouth. Uh, shops, services, facilities, jobs, education, and transport uh, uh, to Exeter and beyond. Um, in terms of demographics, uh, it's an interesting picture, population of around 5,400, um, but, but importantly, 2,400 of those are over 65, that's about 44%, and that compares to an East Devon average of, of, of 28% lower uh, for, for the rest of the UK. Um, only 8% of the housing stock uh, is affordable and it's predominantly owner occupied. So there's, there's, there's some interesting skews in some of the figures compared to East Devon and, and, and beyond. Uh, the important point to note in terms of planning designations is that Budley is washed over uh, by the AOMB. And, and what that means is that even development in the BUAB uh, is still subject to uh, AOMB uh, policy considerations. Um, looking at uh, development capacity within the BUAB, well, it's pretty limited now. I think there's one site being considered and possible windfalls, but other than that, really for future needs, what uh, I, I think maybe the case is that members might be looking beyond the BUAB for future opportunities. Um, and with that in mind, the, the map, um, uh, the, the, the planning map um, for Budley shows that the site is constrained obviously to the south by the sea, um, but also to the east and west by the coastal uh, protection preservation area. Um, and in addition to that, there's an area of green, a green wedge um, uh, uh, protecting uh, the gap between the settlement and Knoll. Uh, green wedge is not an absolute constraint, as members will know, but it is. it does raise some bars and some, some, some challenges for development there. Thank you, Wendy. Next slide, please. So this is looking a little bit further um, at, at the site uh, members now. There's, there, there's, there's a map of the site uh, 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 and also a photograph um, looking from uh, the road uh, south uh, up the site. As Giles said, there's, there's, there's one willing owner, a single owner, uh, which makes life easy. They are willing. Uh, Wayne Holmes has a position with the owner. Um, and really uh, subject to planning considerations would be willing and ready to work up a planning application. Importantly, the site's available now um, uh, 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 and uh, that all uh, uh, is pointing in the right direction we feel for deliverability. Um, it's four acres, about 1.6 hectares. Um, it abuts the Buab on two sides uh, in the south and the west. Um, it's gently sloping, as you can see from the photograph. Um, and um, we'll come on uh, with photographs in, in a moment or two, but, but it's pretty well contained by built form topography and uh, vegetation. Um, Jamie, uh, as Joel said, um, the infrastructure is, is connected, um, uh, drainage and electricity, and, and, and no uh, uh, unforeseen um, uh, large infrastructure costs are, are, are considered likely uh, uh, with um, development. Um, there's an access solution there um, uh, uh, with visibility displays uh, uh, can be achieved um, and, and really um, uh, overall challenges with delivering and access and the development are considered to be uh, uh, low uh, with no abnormal costs. Thank you, Wendy. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so this slide contains three photographs. The top two are um, of the site um, and they, they are slightly blown up from the previous slide. And you can see members that the uh, existing hedgerows are mature and pretty strong. 
Um, there's a big opportunity to beef those up, though, with additional uh, uh, ground level uh, and uh, tree native planting. The bottom photograph uh, shows uh, the site on the corner, which is subject to a presentation next, I believe, by Clinton Devon Estates. But you can see um, what are the point I was making about uh, this, our site, which lies beyond that large hedgerow in the centre of the photograph and, and the tree, um, uh, is, is, is really how well contained the site is. Um, importantly, there's no local level landscape designations. Um, the site is, uh, we think, very much settlement edge character. You can see built developments on two sides. Um, and, and I think we feel that it's, it, it, it's separate um, uh, uh, from the undeveloped land to the north and, 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 and beyond. Um, really by virtue of those, those key factors of topography, built development and uh, landscape screening. So really the site presents uh, quite a gilt-edged opportunity we feel uh, to retain um, uh, uh, and enhance hedgerows, put new native tree planting in, uh, to improve and enhance uh, habitat connectivity, um, and, and really uh, reflect um, a local scale for Budley in the site um, and uh, character and appearance uh, and, and materials in, in, in any scheme. And, and all of that will help address the AOMB considerations. Thank you, Wendy. Next slide, please. So uh, we've had um, uh, 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 the ecologists look at it. Uh, and again, no statutory or non-statutory designations on ecology. Um, the habitats are of low ecolog ecological importance, uh, a low level grazing land. Um, yes, there are opportunities to retain, enhance and buffer the hedgerows. Um, and um, you know, that could all be a, a, a planned uh, uh, following protected survey species and, and, and the mitigation will, will flow from those. Um, but the key opportunity here is that the site presents a, a really clear opportunity to uh, incorporate 10% biodiversity net gain within the site through all of those measures, plus things like edible streets that Giles has referred to earlier. Thank you, Wendy. Next slide, please. So really, uh, this slide focuses on the opportunities and benefits um, of, of, of potential future developments. And, and we've taken the liberty to uh, identify a possible uh, a, a solution to, to the site's development. And what, what this shows, members, is the site could deliver between 50 and 60 new homes. Um, it, Importantly, I think in terms of the demo, uh, demographics of Budley, there's an opportunity for a balance and range of house types and tenures. Um, we can achieve that uh, 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 sensitive development in the AMB through careful treatments of the development's edges, master planning, landscape uh, and materials, a structural landscape scheme, 10% uh, BNG, as I've said, using local character and materials, um, uh, all of that is in uh, Wayne Holmes' DNA through their um, experiences at Nans Leden uh, uh, at the Duchy of Cornwall. That's in Newquay. Uh, Charles referred to that earlier. Um, and finally, the important point of uh, connectivity. Um, uh, there is an opportunity to connect in with the adjoining site through discussions with that landowner um, and also on street uh, pedestrian footways. Um, which can be achieved to the west and then down into the town centre through existing uh, streets and networks. Thank you, Wendy. Final slide, please. Thank you. So in summary, um, we've got a site that is available uh, 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 and deliverable now. Um, it can be delivered, I think importantly, members, at an appropriate scale, not only to the site and the AOMB, uh, but also to Budley um, and its local context. Uh, that site and scheme is a clear opportunity to mitigate landscape and ecology effects. Uh, we've talked about 50 to 60 new homes, but what we haven't mentioned is, is that... Three um, minutes a left. Thank you. Uh, a, a fully policy compliant uh, affordable housing delivery uh, is achievable, uh, given the absence of abnormals. Um, we've got good access and infrastructure. Um, we can create through uh, master planning and, 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 and the variety of tenures, that balanced and mixed community that is so needed here. Um, and importantly, um, a collaborative approach. And that means working 
right at the start with the community um, through the planning process, through the neighbourhood plan uh, uh, to deliver a great outcome uh, for the community. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that presentation. Really interesting. Um, I think what caught me towards the end there was that you're proposing 50% affordables. Um, it's really interesting. What is the usual um, quantum of makeup of those affordables through Wayne well, Home on a standard scheme? What what do you use and do you have a, a preferred supplier? It, it tends to it tends to be policy led. Um, so yeah, tip, typically seventy percent affordable rent, thirty percent shared ownership. But obviously, North Devon's got a social rent policy, so we're delivering social rent up there as well. Um, so I think you know fifty percent is the current uh, policy for Budley. Um, this site can meet it because it doesn't have the significant constraints um, and viability issues that we, we touched on earlier. Um, so we'd be willing to work with members to, to create a mix um, that works for both parties. Fantastic. Thank you. Councillor Skinner, we go to you, please. Thank you. Just, just for identification purposes, you guys, and a good presentation, very well put together, I might add, um, like lots of things within it. But um, uh, is this is this development that's next door that you said working collaboratively with? Is this a, is this doctor's field or whatever they call it? Is, so, is uh, the, one, the, the, one, the one so the one we were suggesting um, is actually the, the next presentation, um, just to show that there are linkages which could lead in if 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 that's the way the allocation goes. Um, we can provide our own pedestrian footlink um, on the on the highway land to create, uh, across the verge of the front of our site. Um, in all honesty, we we yet to establish and, and build a rapport with with the with the development, which I know has, has stalled, but I think it is now on getting going again. Um, but again, yeah, in time we can have those discussions. So it is Doctor's Field then. That is the one on the west, yeah. And we were yeah. talking about the one on the east, yeah. That's the one that's what the one I talked about. And and um Councillor Ledger, you stole my thunder because I think it's a really good question to ask about the fifth. The one thing that did um to hit on me was to see within your your presentation 50 percent affordable well people don't give up 50 percent affordable uh, as a norm and i take it from when you're talking about your anomalies what you're saying is that you haven't got too many other constraints so you feel that within the development site standing alone as it is and or and or working with uh the the uh, site next door which is is good uh, uh, that's all fine uh, whatever that that tends to be which doesn't really affect the consequence here um but uh, for me, I was just wondering how it just seemed an anomaly. Obviously, Council Ledger picked up an anomaly that we don't see people coming forward with 50% and you're giving it up right up at the front end. And we want to understand that because we think that's great news. If you can do that, that's great news. And uh, we'll see how it is. Well, that's policy for Budley um, at present. So we're, we're willing to meet that because the site can, can cope with it. And on that basis, you, you consider this is deliverable at 50% affordable housing? We'll hold you to that. Yeah. Obviously, <laughs> as, as I said to Dan, um, that is subject to the mix within the affordable 10 years and, yeah. and working out a balance that works for both parties. I get that. I get yeah. that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm yeah. done. Thank you. Councillor Skinner, sorry. May I just 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 um, add something on to that? Obviously, that's current, poli current policy in the adopted local plan, 50% yeah. budly, as we understand it. We don't yeah. know what the policy is going to say in the new local plan. So, 70, um, I think. 70. I think it's 70. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, guys. I get that. I do get that. Thank you. Yep. Thank you all. Uh, Councillor David, we move to you, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, there was a previous development in Budley um, which uh, also promised 50%. Um, and then came back with viability concerns. The builder went bust and we got nothing like 50%. Uh, could you just comment on that, please? Yeah, sure. And I, I think this comes back to our, our introduction, really, and credibility. Um, Wayne Homes have been established in the southwest for over 20 years. Um, we've got significant asset value and cash in the books. Um, we aren't debt funded. It's all in-house cash reserves. Um, we can discuss group reven revenues another time, but we are a well-funded outfit that pursue applications and build out schemes um, to deliver homes. We, we, we don't speculatively throw in applications to try and turn sites and, and we've never stalled on a site. That's it to hear. Does any other member wish to speak at this time? 
No. Okay. Um, Councillor Pratt, I'll come to you for the last question. Thank you. Um, You've muted again, Councillor Pratt. You hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you now. Sorry. Um, the uh, notes I have from the planning officers on this uh, site, um, the, uh, the situation is that, uh, as you know, that Budley is in an AONB area. Um, how is that going to change uh, the, the site? I think we lost you towards the end of that. As far as what sort of special things would you be doing on the site to uh, to uh, help the, uh, the views? Just for that, yeah. Um, I don't know. When... I don't know if you you heard all of that or if that was just my connection. But Councillor Pratt was breaking up for most of that. Um, we, we, no, we, online we, as we, well. We caught parts of it. Chair, so maybe I could have a go at answering what I heard. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll try and ask him just to repeat. Councillor Pratt, can you just sum up again? Sorry. Yes. Can maybe you turn hear off me your, now? your video? Maybe turn off your video just for bandwidth. Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's better. Yes. Um, I was just saying about uh, Budley Salton being in an AONB area, how that will affect your uh, development. Um, anything special that you'll be doing because of the fact that it's in an AONB area? Yeah. Take this in the last yeah. Thanks, Councillor Davy. Yeah, um, it's a good point. Um, uh, uh, clearly, um, the AONB designation raises the bar in a number of respects. Um, but, but really looking at your own policy at the moment, it's about conserving uh, the AOMB. And I think it's important that that is noted as being very different to preserving uh, uh, something. Conserving um, means preventing the overuse uh, of a resource. And I think really what th that identifies as a challenge for development is to say, OK, what has the site got already that we can reuse? And I think the clear uh, answer to that is really strong existing hedgerows and tree planting. And that's, that's the starting cue really for a landscape design that buffers and beefs up those hedgerows with, 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 with wider hedgerows that are native species, new native tree planting to reinforce that really strong uh, existing uh, uh, hedgerow. Um, especially to views from uh, the east and, and, and north. Um, and really then it comes down to a clever master planning um, and the use of structural landscaping within the sites. Uh, uh, Giles mentioned uh, edible streets and tree planting within streets, which is something that the National Planning Policy Framework is now supporting. Um, Wayne Holmes is experienced in doing that at Nans Ledon in Newquay. Um, so that's something that, that they're not, you know, that, 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 that they're not afraid to do. I think the other point as well is, is the design and look of the scheme. Um, the reason I showed Ivy Bridge and Nans Ledden earlier is because we aren't just building uh, white boxes in a field. You know, we have a lot of thought that goes into the design and that would be part of the consultation as well. Um, I, I should have uh, perhaps declared, uh, Shirley, that I, I am a member of the East Devon uh, AONB uh, partnership. Um, but we have had some uh, difficulties in, uh, in East Devon over developments in, um, in AONB uh, areas. And uh, I'm, I'm glad to hear from what you've just said. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Councillor Young, we've got 30 seconds left on this. Right, I'll be I'll be very quick. Um, connectivity uh, to um, to the common um, uh, would be appreciated. Um, um, the the area where your development is is fairly close to the cycle path that comes off the uh, railway line, and also it get, connects up onto the common. Um, but the cycleway then goes through the town, and it's a bit bit of a Mickey Mouse um, cycleway. If there is any possibility of 
uh, providing some uh, cycle provision, uh, that would be great. Uh, but one of the things that I'm going to be going on about uh, today is the, the connectivity between the, the, the towns and uh, the common and the open areas. Thank you. Thanks very much. I think that's noted. Um, I think that's everything. So, um, Giles and Simon, thank you very much for your time today. Really appreciate it. Thanks for the presentation. Um, and I'm sure we'll be in touch soon. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. So we now move on to our 11.30, and it's back to Mr. John from Clinton Devon Estates uh, to discuss land adjacent to Barn Lane. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Chair and members. Um, so this is land adjacent to Barn Lane. Um, obviously, this is the site which immediately uh, butts the one that's just been discussed. Um, Wendy, would you mind presenting the uh, constraints and opportunities slide for this site, please? So this is the site, and I, I feel like many of the attributes that, um, uh, of, the, of the site um, have already been outlined uh, in the previous presentation. So I'll try and be light on the detail at this stage. Essentially, it's the same. It's a well-contained site. It, it, it's um, a simple site in the sense that it's, you know, there's no inherent complexities about it. It has an urban edge of urban character, uh, urban edge character, um, and I think it lends itself well to the possibility of being development, uh, providing development, um, given the characteristics of this site and the important of, importance, which has been relayed earlier, of Budley as a sustainable location. And if there is a requirement for housing, um, uh, this is a good location to provide that in a way that it, it is not going to set out um, unwelcome precedent or, or uh, harm under the character of the, of the wider AOMB. Um, sits obviously within the context of uh, the wider development. You've got the, the main uh, road to the north there, you've got Barn Lane to the east, and as the previous commentator said, very well contained within um, mature hedge lines, etc. Um, so it has opportunities to it. Um, uh, it also has opportunities um, to link well into existing facilities. Um, you will see there's a sort of blue double-headed arrow there with dots in it. That's an opportunity to connect this site and ultimately the adjoining site as well, if, if that's where members are you know, supportive of that allocation, um, uh, into the uh, surrounding footpath network. Um, and what you may not see is immediately to the south of this slide, the bottom, um, you're actually very close to um, Buddy Salton Primary School there, uh, and, and then into the wider um, urban area. So this is actually, although it's on the edge of the settlement, it actually is quite well, easy, quite easy to connect into the into local facilities and into the wider urban area. So it does generate, it is locationally quite a good opportunity site um, and clearly, um, you know, presents an opportunity not only for development in its own right, but part of a potentially a com more comprehensive solution, uh, which might associate with the land immediately to the west that's just been discussed. Um, various opportunities to get into the site. You know, you might be able to come in, well, you can come in off the off the main road. Equally, you, you can come in off Barn Lane as well as required. Um, so we think it's a good opportunity given the settlement context, given the opportunities to connect into that settlement and uh, given the characteristics of the site. Um, can I have the um, uh, the next slide thing? So this is a, a sketch uh, of the uh, of what might be able to come forward. Um, it's capable of delivering in the order of 40 houses and I think that's what's what's shown shown there at the moment. So a good contribution. And, and of a development of this size, it's, um, it's likely to be able to bear some significant afford levels of affordable housing, potentially more if there's a wider solution there. Um, so it, it's a good opportunity. Um, the A and B location means it's still important to um, be mindful of the wider characteristics of the wider A O M B. And notwithstanding the, um, the self-contained character, there are ways of doing that. And I think um, the sketch uh, tries to show that, for example, by putting open space in the northeastern corner on that junction um, to accommodate place space, uh, the, the, the needs of the residents there, uh, and also fulfill a wider sort of landscape character function. Um, 
shows you, but we've shown the access in from the east in this instance of Barn Lane. But clearly, there's a possibility of also connecting through to that land to the west as required. Um, and you won't be able to see it in the notation there, but this, for example, um, also shows um, a footpath coming in on the sightward side of the, um, the site, uh, and that then connecting in to the, the footpath network that extends on the, on the existing urban edge to the south. So you don't, you're not going to be pushing pedestrians onto Barn Lane. You can bring it within the site, connect into the footpath network thereafter. So that's a good, um, sustainable way of encouraging access to the primary school and beyond, for example. Um, consistent with Clinton Devon's approach elsewhere, they take um, um, quite a proactive approach to the uh, to design. Um, and clearly, one way of addressing the the A and B locational issue is not just through the the containness of the site with also um, by um, employing a high level of, of architectural uh, and landscape design. And you'll have seen that, for example, in, elsewhere in Budley, there's the award-winning Greenway Lane schemes that they brought forward um, with, another, with, with a, on a JV arrangement uh, with developers some years ago. Uh, and, 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 and that's, I think, is acknowledged to be a very successful scheme and very one of, you know, commensurate with the quality of Budley Sultan. Um, so, so in, in summary, I think it's a good opportunity. Um, it's a good opportunity to do development in a, in a good location that's not going to harm the wider character of the AMB. That's commensurate with the size, scale, and sustainability attributes of Buddy Salterton. It provides off opportunities to deliver AMB and importantly provides an opportunity to be part of a wider comprehensive development if that's what the council feels is appropriate for Buddy Salterton. Um, thank you, members. Uh, that's all I have. Thanks very much for that, Mr. John. Um, just a question for me. How, has there been much discussion with the, the previous uh, speakers on bringing forward a joint scheme between the two? Uh, I think there's been some preliminary conversations, but nothing in detail. And then um, I know you hesitated to, to, to actually name the number of affordable housing units in there. If this was to come forward now, would it produce a policy or could it produce a policy compliant scheme? Uh, yes, I mean the starting point. I think the previous commentator said is always to look to policy, isn't it? And as you know, and again, I, I think in our conversations yesterday, one thing the estate takes is a, a proactive attitude to these things, and have examples of um, schemes which exceed the policy requirements. You know, for example, the short furlong scheme in beer, for example. So they are very pragmatic about that. So if uh, if the same policy was to be taken up through this local plan. We'd accept to expect to see twenty dwellings that were affordable on this side. Yeah, I mean, we, I, I, yeah, that would be the starting point. Uh, <laughs> usual rules apply in terms of viability and so on. But clearly, they've got the estate has got a track record of being, you know, quite um, pragmatic and open-minded to finding, you know, beneficial solutions. There. Thank you very much, Councillor Skinner. I needed, to get that, I needed to get it on the recording, Councillor Skinner, sorry. <laughs> yeah, non-committal, I think the answer was to that, but we'll work with com policy compliance. Anyway, um, yeah, really good. I, I, I wouldn't expect um, um, anybody to say to be else, anything else, really. Um, Mr John, I wonder if I could just, just ask, when we, uh, I suppose we can't go back to that plan, but we had a plan just now, and we was, uh, which you had up, and it was working with the neighbours, um, the neighbouring site and about how we did some, you know, whether we drive something collectively, which I, th I think possibly would be in this instance, in strategic planning terms, mm -hmm. if more can be got from it in working collaboratively together, then that's what one would do. And, and I think there's some, some positives possibly that could come out of that. Um, but in relation to the site that we saw previously, and no doubt probably you were probably listening to that and then your site mm -hmm. that has now come on, mm -hmm. where is your site in actual location, to the one that was speaking previously. Is it absolutely right next door? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. It's immediately abutting to the east of that site. So, the, so we're hedge width away then? Correct. Right, okay. That, that's all I needed to know. Thank you very much indeed. That's just, I want to be absolutely clear on it. Thank you very much. And I do like the um, our policy in Budley Sullivan, as you are aware, is 50% and that's where we're at. So we'll run with that one. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Skinner. Uh, Councillor Davey. Over to you. 
Thank you, Chair. Uh, I mean, obviously, looking at the, the two sites that we've just heard, it makes sense to develop them both. Um, and um, because otherwise your site is actually going to be uh, kind of separated by, by a, a, a field, you know, so it, it kind of makes more logic yeah. for both sites to be developed. Um, and I wonder how you would envisage um, encouraging cycling, shall we say, to be part of that. You've mentioned um, linking into the footpath network, mm. um, but I'm, I'm just thinking about people being able to cycle into town because although, as you said, it's fairly accessible for the school, that's still a fair way from the town mm. centre. Um, and uh, certainly I, I would want to hop on my bike um, and I just wonder how you see you know what provision you would expect to make for cycling so i think um there's the provision that we made as part of any um architectural design you know that is making you know cycle parking you know uh, space within the units and so on and so forth um in terms of sort of wider ambition to encourage cycling again you know i don't see a particular problem with you know, if you can facilitate a connection um, into the bottom corner of that site, which abuts the existing built-up area, you know, you've got a pedestrian or and cycle link there. You join the main the, the main road that that road, um, which is properly laid out. It's less laney um, than it than the um, the more rural component there, um, and more suburban in character. And then you just jump on your bike and you cycle into the, into the town if you wished, or to to wherever. So I don't, I, again, you know, um, I don't see this as a particularly difficult site to um, to facilitate cycling or, or walking along because of its um, um, relationship with um, a suburban sort of road layout, as opposed to dark, narrow lanes, which are the disincentive for other than anyone other than keen cyclists. Thanks very much. You happy with that, Councillor Daly? Fantastic. Are there any further questions for, for members? No? Okay. Mr. John, again, thank you for your time. Um, no problem. I'm sure, well, we'll be seeing you at 12.40, so <laughs> we'll see you then. Thank you very much. Um, so we are 10 minutes early. So if possible, we could take another short break. We are going to have to break until 12 o'clock. Uh, so you've got a little bit of time, members. Thank you. You still don't want me to sing then, Dan? You can sing all you like. I'm <laughs> going to put myself on mute, though. Nobody wants me to sing. I'm, well, I'll probably put out. Oh, go on, Philip. Give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go on, then. I'm going to go and cry. Why not? Yeah, I can't drink more tea. Ugh. Right, I'm going to mute everyone now. You've been told there for that.
Wendy. Hi, it's Paul here. Can I, um, cause I, I would have missed declaring interest and stuff at the beginning. So should I do that um, at the beginning of this bit or what do you think? I'm calling you first, Paul. Thank you, Doe. I shall make a long speech then. We're ready to go again. So thank you for your patience, everyone. Um, we'll start with, uh, we've now had Councillor Arnold um, attend the meeting. Councillor Arnold, do you have any declaration of interest you wish to make? Oh, apologies for late arrival, uh, Chair. I had a last minute uh, hospital appointment um, and uh, I have no declarations of interest that I'm aware of at this stage. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, so we go back to the presentations and we start with David Seaton um, for land at Cortlands Cross in Limston. Seaton, are you with us? I am, thank you, Chair. You have 15 minutes whenever you're ready. Um, it's all yours. Okay, we'll just get the screen shared. Um, and then we can whiz through the presentation. So thank you, councillors, for the opportunity to uh, make this presentation to you. Um, I trust you can all see. I think we're nearly there. Yeah, we can see that. Thank you. You can see that and you can hear us. OK, yep. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, so what, why Cortlands Cross? So, so Cortlands Cross um, is an opportunity for both Limpston and Exmouth. Um, members are probably aware that it's a site that is in Limpston Parish, but it physically adjoins Exmouth. So it's a site that is well related to both of those settlements. Cortlands Cross fronts the A376 and I'm sure as everyone's aware, that's the key transport route to and, and from Exmouth and Exeter and Limston. There's a strong housing need in the area. Um, that has been fueled by fairly low levels of delivery from Exmouth in recent years, particularly affordable housing. And this is a site that can contribute to the council's identified shortfall and particularly the affordable housing need uh, in both areas. Um, the, oh, can I click through? Um, here's a, a, an image that shows the site. So we've got Cortlands Cross, which is the existing entrance to um, Exmouth. If you are coming from the Exeter direction, and as you approach Exmouth and Cortlands Cross, the actual parish boundary runs along Cortlands Road, if you can see my cursor. And the site is this area in here. Now, the site boundary comes along the front here. There is a bus stop on the, on the road frontage here. And the number 57 bus stops there at the moment. So there is, uh, excellent connectivity up and down the 376 to Exeter into the town centre of Exmouth. Um, the other key features that you can see is uh, shown on here is the extension to Dinod Way, um, which has planning permission. Um, and so in the future, this area will change and a roundabout will be introduced here. Um, so changing the nature of the way the site would relate to the road frontage in this area. Other key features are an area of landscaping um, here at the northern edge. Um, as you drive 
towards Exmouth from Exeter, you'll see that the, the landscaping, and that does mean that dwellings here will be not as prominent in the landscape because of the softening effect of that existing planting. As you get closer to the site, you do see the rear of these properties that front uh, Cortlands Lane. Um, and it's probably the not the best entrance uh, that one could have um, to Exmouth. So if I move on, so the site, we do think the development of the site offers an opportunity um, to tidy up the gateway entrance to uh, Exmouth when you are arriving from the Exeter direction along the 376. Um, the development could deliver new sports facilities for both uh, Limpston and for Exmouth. It is a site that has been looked at by council officers for meeting recreational needs. I think I'm, a couple of years ago, uh, an options report looked at the opportunity the site could present in that regard. I'll come back to that uh, when we've got the aerial image up again in a minute. Both communities could benefit from much needed affordable housing. Um, and the site is visually well contained. We've got the uh, landscaping in there. It's fairly well outside the boundary with the AOMB. Um, and so unlike some other sites around the urban edge of Exmouth, they have a much closer relationship with the AOMB than this site does. The East Devon Way currently runs through the site. That would be protected in situ. That wouldn't be affected. Development would take place either side of that within a landscape corridor, within a landscape corridor. so keeping the East Devon Way running within a landscape corridor. Um, so we do think it's a sustainable uh, location for development. Um, so just going back to the aerial image then, um, roughly half of the site is proposed for development, um, which is these two fields here. The East Devon Way is running through on this alignment. Uh, it does at the moment. There's this rectangular block of existing landscaping here, which would we would propose to enhance. There's a field here which is the northernmost field, which I'm just outlining with the cursor. No development would be proposed in that. That's proposed for informal open space and biodiversity net gain. Um, and then we've got an area here. So we've got Limpston Manor um, just to the south of the development here, Cortland's House to the southwest and a broadly uh, square field, which we are proposing for recreational use, picking up on the uh, options that were investigated uh, a couple of years ago. So that could accommodate a um, couple of football or rugby pitches. Um, you can see a cricket square um, outlined on there to give you an idea of the size of that space. So it could accommodate a cricket pitch. We're showing just in this point um, some changing facilities, um, small, you know, clubhouse, something like that, with possibly some parking areas. That's distinctly different from the previous proposals that were put forward on this site, and I will um, come to that in 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 a minute. So we've got roughly. Um, I think eight and a half area, eight and a half acres of development area shown here. So that's about 120 new homes that could be accommodated. We're about four acres in this field here for the informal open space. And we're about seven and a half acres for the recreational field down here, which has the effect of pulling the development well away from the older um, uh, historic interests, which are closer to the site. So if I carry on, so historically concerns uh, have been raised by Limpston residents. Um, 
And I'll, I'll just talk a moment about those um, because the site, as you can see from the overheads, is physically and visually separated from Limston by the intervening valley, which contains the Wotton, Wotton Brook. There's, there is certainty in relation to any northwards expansion. Um, so the existing landscape planting along the northern edge and by proposing the open space field, the informal open space field, that three acre field, that existing boundary, hedgerows and trees, creates a high level of visual containment and it gives certainty that the development can't spread beyond that down the Watton Brook and to encroach um, into Limston. It also means that in landscape and visual terms, the site could reasonably accommodate the development and it won't be visible in longer term views. So the second point we've just popped up here is the officer comments that um, led to the um, sustainability score of three for this site, that it's on the northern edge of Exmouth, but in Livingston Parish, that's a fact. Large and elevated site of prominence in the landscape. We don't concur with that for the reasons that I've explained. And the, the proposal is no longer close by the heritage constraints. Your officers draw attention to the planning application for residential development that was made over a decade ago and lost on appeal. Um, and so I'd just like to respond to those to try and explain how we've dealt with them. Because the, the site isn't an elevated site of prominence in the landscape. You can see from the existing landscaping, you only just need to drive down the 376 to see the landscaping and the roofscape of a development would, I think, be um, able to be seen, but the development wouldn't be prominent because of the amount of screening that's already there. The proposal's no longer close by heritage constraints. The recreational field pulls the area of development a long way away from those heritage um, um, uh, 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 buildings and there isn't an inter interrelationship as there was in the previous proposal, which covered the whole site with development. Um, and that appeal decision is some 10 years old now, and the amendments to the proposal have fully taken account of the, of the comments that were made by the inspector. So, in summary, we would ask members to reassess the site, having regard to those changes. In particular, the fact that the development now is only coming this far westwards and not including this field, and the fact that that's very positive in terms of uh, meeting recreational needs in the area. The use of the field to the north here, the three acre field for biodiversity net gain and certainty in terms of lack of encroach, further encroachment towards Limston, and the maturity of this landscaping buffer, which is already there, but can be uh, also enhanced. And then the other change, which is, again, it's shown here in terms of the permitted route, not been built yet, but the Deenon Way extension, which is um, it, which the county do obviously have plans to deliver. They are changes, therefore, to the nature of the proposal and also to the context uh, in which the site um, sits at the moment. So, in summary, therefore, we do think that the development presents an opportunity to provide, ben provide benefits to both Exmouth and Limston, and it can contribute towards the council's affordable housing requirement. We are proposing, obviously, affordable housing in accordance with the council's emerging policy on that. There is the opportunity to deliver new sports facilities on a seven and a half acre site, and that's part of the proposal. The site is well contained now in landscape terms and can deliver a strong quality gateway entrance to Exmouth, as well as a landscape buffer for Limston. Roughly 50-50 of development and open space for active recreational and informal recreational needs. The past planning issues we do think have been overcome by this revised scheme. So we do think some of the comments that have been made by your officers are a little bit out of date, don't fully they're not fully cognizant of these changes. Um, so we do think it's a good opportunity in a sustainable location. 
which would assist East Devon in meeting its climate change and carbon reduction objectives. And uh, our clients, Waddington Park Limited, would wish to work with the council to deliver a quality development, providing these identified benefits. So members, that's um, in a nutshell, the proposal in succinct form. Um, I hope that's sufficient to uh, brief you on the matter. And if you've got any questions, myself and Jerry Kay, my client would be only too happy to answer them. Really, thank you for that presentation. Um, I think we'll just go straight into a QA and a We'll start with Councillor Davy, please. First, Councillor Skinner. You mean I'm first? Right. Um, I hope you've got a pen there because um, I've got a list here. Um, as you'll know, uh, I hope, there is a footpath that runs through the, uh, I think, the centre of um, where your housing is proposed. That's it. Um, can I have some assurance that's going to be protected? This is entirely selfish, but um, I do often walk that footpath um, across the fields and down to Limpston. Um, so I would like some assurance that that would uh, still remain in place. Um, how are you going to provide an access to this site if the Dinan Way extension is not completed? Because, uh, as you'll probably know, we've had several attempts to uh, get the funding for that and none has been found yet. Um, I agree with you that it is probably not prominent, as officers have said, um, but it is elevated. Uh, I think we need to be aware that this is at the top of a hill. Um, but I, I do agree that um, views of the site are actually very limited. Um, and I'd also like you to comment on the number of affordable homes you think you could actually provide uh, within the site, um, given that you're providing quite a large amount of it for recreational use. That obviously um, changes the ratio of uh, land cost to uh, housing numbers that you're able to get. So I wonder what percentage of affordable you think you could get. I mean, you say policy compliant, um, but I, I wonder what you think um, the viability Is of that happens? site would allow. Thank you. Okay, thank you. If I take those in order then, um, in relation to the first point about the footpath, the East Devon Way link across the site, yes, that would be kept in situ at the moment. The footpath runs, there's planted bunding either side of that footpath, that would remain so that the path and the way that you walk that path wouldn't be affected. There would be development either side of those two bunds, but that's the only change that you would experience in terms of walking that route. In terms of the access from the A376, we have got a detailed design of an access that, that works. We've had that, uh, we went through that with Devon County Council. So the bus stop would remain and there is a, a point of access for a simple, for a T-junction off the 376. Mm. And if memory serves me correctly, there is a right turning, is there a right, there's a right turning facility mm. associated with, with that. So if for some reason that, um, the Dean and Way extension remains unfunded, then we could provide the T-junction at that point. Um, nice that I think we're on the same page in terms of the limited views. Yes, the, the topography is what it does, but as it, you know, the land falls away, that's why I think the development's not too, um, there aren't expansive views from it. In terms of affordable, yes, I've said that it would be compliant with policy. Um, I'm struggling a little bit between existing policy, which I think we're clear on in terms of, um, I think that's 30% from memory, but the emerging affordable policy in the draft plan that's currently being considered, there didn't seem to, to be a clearly access, uh, expressed percentage because there is it's there the plethora of affordable products that are going into the mix on that. Um, I think what we say is that what we are looking is to deliver in accordance with policy. So once that policy is settled and we've got clarity on that percentage, we will be providing that percentage. And we're confident about viability in relation to the provision of that 
and in relation to the recreational uh, offer. Thank you very much for that. Um, we'll take one more speaker. Councillor Ingham, you've yet to speak today. Thank you, Chair. Uh, you've mentioned that you've dealt with um, uh, existing policies and you've overcome them, but you haven't mentioned that the whole of this site is part of a green wedge between Exmouth and Limston, designed, created to prevent coalescence. So how have you overcome that? I don't see you have at all. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, hopefully I've been clear about the, I mean, Councillor, obviously you're correct. At the moment in the existing local plan, the site sits within a green wedge. The green wedge policy, uh, as it reads at the moment, doesn't exclude development necessarily. You have to test development for its impact on achieving coalescence. The point that I think we're making is that there is a substantial residual distance, which is effectively the, the virtually the entirety of the Watton Valley. And there will be certainty because of the recreational use of the, um, the, the field in the southwest corner, the northernmost, the, what I would call the informal recreational field, plus the landscape buffer as we come back up to the 376, effectively presents an impermeable green barrier to further development cascading down the hill towards the Rock Watton Brook and towards Limston. So it's not conceivable that coalescence could occur and the review of the plan does give the opportunity for the council to review the defined boundaries of the green wedge. So it is quite possible for an allocation to be made, recognizing those points that coalescence won't occur and then give certainty to that residual gap. Many thanks for that. Um, Councillor Skinner, Young and Miller, um, could you please send your, your questions through to Wendy? Uh, I'm sure that she'll put them to Mr Seaton um, and we'll try and get those answers for you. Um, thank you very much for your presentation, really appreciate it. We, we are going to have to move on to, to the next uh, presenter now, but thank you for your time today. Very much thank appreciated. you. So we now move on to the 1220 Peter Skinner representing the trustees of the Harefield Estate in Seaton. Peter, are you with us? Yes, can you hear me? We can indeed. Uh, it's over to you. You have uh, 15 minutes whenever you're ready. Thank you so much. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Peter Skinner and I'm speaking on behalf of the trustees of the Harefield Estate who own all the land included in this presentation. I am not a planning surveyor or consultant, so I would ask for your forbearance if I do not bombard you with graphs, plans, surveys, reports, and the rest. Rather, I would just like to give you an overview of the land in question and allow common sense to influence your assessment of the suitability of the land for any form of development. Uh, the first point is this land is not in Seaton, as stated in the agenda, but is on the eastern fringe of Limpston, as shown on the plan I hope you can see in front of you. The land I have been invited to present on is annotated GH slash ED slash 74 and 75. 75 is shown shaded brown, and it is not owned by the trustees of the Harefield Estate, and therefore not included in this presentation. I am only presenting on plot number 74, shaded yellow on the eastern fringe of Limston, adjoining the A376 Exeter to Exmouth Road. Now this is quite a large site extending to approximately eight hectares or 20 acres and comprises one large field of grass with no buildings. It is adjacent to and located on the eastern boundary of Limpston. There are residential properties along its southwestern and southern boundaries and part of its northwestern boundary. Access is excellent with the A376 Exeter to Exmouth Road running along the whole of the eastern boundary 
and the minor road known as Strawberry Hill running along the northwestern boundary. The topography is gently sloping with one or two steeper slopes in places down to a small stream which flows westwards through the centre of the plot. In terms of national land designations, um, it is within a nitrate vulnerable zone, but otherwise is not in an area of outstanding natural beauty or a site of special scientific interest and has no listed buildings within it or on it. Locally, the land is within the coastal preservation area. However, it is virtually impossible to see the sea from this plot or vice versa because of the topography being as it is set back and in a dip behind limpstone. The site has the potential to provide 118 homes, according to the report that accompanied the working draft local plan, which equates to about six houses per acre. The report accompanying the working draft local plan provides a suitability rating for sites. It is interesting to note that plot 72, immediately to the northwest, also shaded yellow, has been given the same allocation suitability rating of four as this plot. However, whereas plot 72 has been put forward for allocation, plot 74 has not, despite the fact it has the same suitability rating and would provide a similar number of houses. In terms of flooding, the vast majority of this site lies within an area described as being at a very low risk of flooding from rivers or the sea, meaning that each year, the vast majority of the site has a chance of flooding of less than 0.1%. The stream and its immediate margins flowing through the center of the land are at a higher risk of flooding, more than 3.3% per year. Plot 74 has a number of features that lend it to residential development as noted previously. Uh, for example, proximity to existing residential development, implying the site may be considered a natural point of growth. It has excellent access and there are a lack of views to or from the sea, therefore a very low visual impact. However, set against this, and if one looks back in time, this valley would have been a most peaceful, pristine and tranquil area, overlooked by Harefield House, now known as St. Peter's Prep School, which has since been ruined and destroyed by possibly the busiest A road in Devon, namely the A376 Exeter to Exmouth Road. Whilst one can easily argue that as such, there is not much more damage man or womankind can do to ruin the area. I do believe the A376 provides a more sustainable or long-term boundary to Limpston, rather than simply drawing a line around the garden boundaries on the perimeter of the village. As such, were this land put forward for allocation, I know the owners would be adamant that any development of the land would have to be undertaken sensitively and in a fashion consistent with the architecture, design and mix of dwellings that prevail within Limpston at present. This is not a site for dumping mass produced three or four bed houses on, but rather a site that should have very careful design, not only in terms of layout and density, but also in terms of the architecture, the design and the mix of housing providing, uh, provided ranging from starter and afford affordable ho homes through to family homes. Looking more specifically at the site and with reference to the Lim Limpston National Plan dated 1st of October, 2013, I note this land was accepted as a potential housing site, but not as a preferred housing site. This neighborhood plan assessed 21 potential housing sites. Um, these sites had the ability to provide anything from one to 150 houses per site. 
The neighborhood plan considered this site as capable of accommodating 80 houses, which I think takes into account the design points I made a moment ago, as opposed to the more dense figure of 118 houses quoted in the report to accompany the working draft local plan. At this site, plot 74, was assessed in the neighborhood plan, not by me, not by a developer with an agenda, but by parish and district councillors and members of the local community as scoring very highly in the following areas. For vehicle access to plot 74, it scored 19 out of 20. For pedestrian access to the primary school, it scored 20 out of 20. And for pedestrian access to transport, it scored 20 out of 20. Uh, the fact that the site does not increase congestion in the village centre scored 16 out of 20. The site achieved a mid-range score in the following areas. Pedestrian access to community services scored 10 out of 20. Proximity to built up area boundaries scored 10 out of 20. And the fact that the site will not lead to coalescence scored 13 out of 20. Coalescence, which in effect refers to the potential of a merger with Exmouth, is seen as the biggest threat to Limpston community. So a good score here, 13 out of 20, I think is particularly noteworthy. In order to give you the whole picture, the site scored poorly on maintaining the local amenity, quality and character of the local environment, where it scored three out of 20. The site's compatibility with urban gain scored three out of 20, and the site's ability to maintain or enhance the special character of the village scored only one out of 20. I think the latter three categories were inevitably going to score poorly, given that the site is away from the village centre and on the eastern fringe of Limston. Uh, to conclude, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this site clearly has merit for residential development, but I would argue that such development would need to be carried out in a genuinely careful and sensitive fashion, having particular regard for the aspects I noted earlier, the design, the layout, the architecture, and most importantly, the housing needs of Limpston itself. The site falls within one, on, one ownership, and should the council deem it suitable for residential development, it could be brought forward immediately. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes my presentation, but I am of course open to any questions you may have. Thank you very much for that, Mr Skinner. Um, Councillor Young, we start with you, please. Uh, th thank you, Chair. As um, ward member for uh, Woodbury and Limston, along with uh, Ben Ingram, um, we share uh, a, a great concern about the co uh, coalition of uh, Limston and uh, Exmouth. Um, and you know, it's going to be a hard sell to sell uh, any development that is between the two. Uh, therefore, uh, slide 72. Um, would be preferable, uh, which is um, further towards the exit direction. Uh, but again, that is going to make a, a tremendous difference to, uh, to, to the village of uh, Limston, a, a big housing estate in that area. Uh, everyone knows the concerns of the uh, flooding issues in Limston, uh, also the concerns of the narrow lanes and uh, now access, no, no pavements to get to the facilities in uh, Limston. So it's, it's a difficult, um, going to be a difficult consideration of trying to include a new housing estate into a, um, a, a, a historic village like Limston. So there, there are hurdles to overcome. Uh, I would like that if there's any benefits uh, for um, footpaths and access uh, towards the common uh, would be uh, greatly appreciated if this development comes forward. Thank you. Councillor Young, can we ensure that we don't make statements in future? It's something that we said at the start of the meeting on both days that we don't make statements on um, each 
individual site and that we just ask questions. This is a fact finding meeting. We can't be giving opinions for or against sites um, and what we'd personally like to see, I'm afraid. Is there any other members that wish to speak? Councillor Skinner, we go to you, please. Thank you, and uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Skinner, for that. Uh, Mr. Skinner, since I would start talking to me, <laughs> Dad, uh, for that presentation. Um, I'm really uh, interested in 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 where the obviously the landowners obviously take quite seriously about the environment in which they live, and that's come over fairly loud and clear. And uh, you were saying that the the optimum figure that was put out which we put as a general sense, 118 dwellings over an area of land. And I, and I get that of working on the housing numbers per hectare, but you considered, or the, certainly the owners uh, were looking considered that a much more considered approach, which fits very much more within the environment, looking at 80 dwellings. Am I, and I, am I, have I, did I get that bit correct? And are you, would you be looking at something far more sympathetic uh, in, in the village um, than, than what you would be, um, looking to commercially make as much as you possibly can by getting as many houses as you can, because you certainly don't come across in that way. And if that was the case, how would you manage that with a developer if you sold, if this land was sold on, how would you manage that within keeping the context of what the owners would like to see within the deliverability of a housing scheme were it to come forward? And I'd like to know how you'd manage that, really, because that's really quite important. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah, th th this family has lived in the area for decades, um, so they're not, as it were, newcomers. Um, the, uh, it would be critical to, and, and for that reason, if none other, it would be critical to make sure the housing den density, etc., is appropriate, so it wouldn't be a purist commercial approach from, as it were, a national house builder. The method by which we would try and um, protect the landscape and offer control would be via conditions of sale. So when the land is sold, it would be subject to um, conditions of sale, just as if you were selling your farm or your house, you might place a condition of sale, a restricted covenant, call it what you will, on the, the, the buyer can't um, develop for any use other than agriculture, um, these two fields shown bordered brown on the attached plan. So there could be conditions of sale put in that limit the number and type of houses and influence the architecture of the houses. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, chat. Thanks very much. Does any other further questions? No. Okay. Thank you very much for your presentation today, Mr. Skinner. Thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So we move to our 12.40, which is back to Mr. John of Clinton Devon Estates to take us through to lunch. Mr. Thank you, John, Chair and members. Um, thank you. Um, so this is the area of land to the east of Town Lane in Woodbury. Um, can I have... Thank you. <laughs> um, so you can see the site there, uh, edged in red, um, sits on the, um, the eastern edge of uh, the village, just off the main road there. Um, it amounts to about 0.7 hectares in total. Um, as you'll appreciate, um, Woodbury is being proposed within your emerging local plan as a local centre, so a, um, a village with um, some capability uh, to grow and some provision of facilities in, within it. Um, this site um, that we've got before us now is um, not subject to any land use designations. Um, you will see immediately to the land, immediately to the south of it, um, you have uh, an area, you can see five dwellings in there, and that's an approved site which is coming out of the ground now, as I understand it, and then you've got some houses beyond that. You Immediately to the north of that, you've got um, the village cricket field, uh, and then beyond that, off the top of the um, the, the slide, there's, there's more residential development. So although this is currently uh, an agricultural use, I think it's paddock, um, it, is, um, it is actually, it forms part of the greater settlement boundary of the village uh, and reads as such. Um, you've got Town Lane there on the western side, which provides vehicular access right the way through into the town centre. Um, and then equally, if you turn left out of the site, um, you can then walk on to Broadway, 
the main road, and then you can walk via a footpath, um, a pavement, all the way into the village centre there, um, uh, which is off to the left and round. Um, so the the site is um, the site is um, in a location or village which is proposed to accommodate some growth. Uh, and it's actually, although on the edge, it reads as being part of the sort of wider built up area of the village uh, and is, is well connected to it via a number of different routes. It, itself, the site is, is well contained. The, um, the sort of landscaping characteristics are shown on that analysis plan before you. So you have, um, you have mature hedgerows uh, around the site and then you have um, a, a boundary formed by um, sort of reasonable um, tree line which um, um, screens the site from the cricket field to the north. Um, so if you can have the illustrative layout, please. So this is the, the, the layout uh, proposal that's, that is, is being proposed. Uh, obviously, this is um, uh, an indicative layout. So there's a number of different solutions that you can come forward, but this seems to be a very good indication of, first of all, the capacity of the site, and also uh, one which relates to the, the landscaping characteristics and, um, and so on of, of the location. Um, able to provide a, a reasonable access onto Town Lane, um, ultimately, you can move that north or south as you needed to, um, and you could uh, get you can get the visibility the visibility display you, um, which you, you need to have. Um, we feel that the, the site's got capacity for about eighteen dwellings, um, so um, you know that's a useful contribution I would suggest to for a village of this size, um, and. And also is of a size which is capable of providing some affordable housing to contribute to the sort of wider, ho wider housing need objectives. Um, the layout um, takes account uh, of the, the site constraints, you know, the, so this, you will see it's, uh, it's set back um, from the hedgerows and trees. Um, and there's some opportunity for, for open space or sort of immediate, uh, immediate play space on the left hand side there, the western side. Um, so it can sit in a self-contained way within the sort of wider sort of settlement context of the village um, uh, and, and in a way that makes a, a, can provide a meaningful um, number of dwellings uh, commensurate with the location. Um, so that's, I think it's a, you know, it's a reasonably, reasonably strong proposition, which reflects the, um, the hierarchy of settlements and takes account of the location. I should say it's not subject to any formal designations. Um, it's not subject, it's not part of the AOMB, there's no other designations, there's no other listed buildings. There are some listed buildings way to the southwest, but they're not proximate to the site. Um, so we think this is a reasonable, reasonably comfortable form of development for this location. Uh, I'd be happy to field any questions. Thank you very much for that, Ms. Young. Uh, Ms. Uh, Councillor Young, we'll go to you, please. Me again, as Ward Councillor. Um, yeah, I know this road. It's the town lane, as everyone knows in the area, is a cut through. There are big issues with uh, transport uh, uh, charging through down that lane. There's no foot town lane le leading down town lane in, into the village. Um, is um, the the most direct route into the village. Therefore, is there a way that we can provide safe access for pedestrians down that lane? Uh, you, um, you do own the, um, th th the land beyond there as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So pavements would be important. Uh, the other issue is the, um, the trees um, to the north of the site. Um, the, the, um, that they are, uh, th there's some ponds in there as well, uh, with great crested newts, I'm told. So th there's going to be issues there, but um, uh, how can we protect those trees at the same time? But I know that the estate are very aware of the, those issues there. Thank you. Yeah, so if I can turn to the, just the biodiversity point there, first of all, um, the, one of the big advantages as you'll appreciate is, is where these issues to do with newts or bats or, or whatever come, come up. They do obviously have the ability, they own the land to the east um, and, and obviously to the north. So there is the ability to um, provide compensatory habitat where that's required. Um, this is an indicative layout, um, albeit a fairly well-informed one, 
um, and is able to shift and change to address these sorts of particular issues as the detailed analysis comes out and say as part of the planning application. So, you know, I would expect there are opportunities to mitigate that. There is land available beyond the site to mitigate that, um, consistent with their approach that they've taken, for example, in East Budley, where these sorts of issues have come up. So, I, you know, I, I, that is, that these are valid constraints, but ones I think which, you know, experience shows that they uh, can be worked around and with. Um, in terms of uh, in terms of accessibility, yeah, I appreciate your point about Town Lane. Um, you know, there, the land to the north. One thing we previously looked at when we've been thinking about the opportunities here is perhaps to run a footpath up by, um, on the inside of the land to the north. That's the cricket field, the wider cricket field area. That wouldn't disrupt any of the cricket activities, which is clearly a very sensitive local local issue and facility. Um, but does uh, does provide the opportunity to provide footpaths on the inside of that pedestrian footway, and equally, um, you know, and as you, you're right, it's less direct, but not unless it's not a lot major distance. Is you can go around um, into Broadway. There's a short hop along uh, the southern part of uh, Town Lane, and then you can get onto that pavement there, which is on the northern side of Broadway, and walk through, and that will take you into I think the I can't remember the name of it, it's a parade, the main sort of square where. The, you've got a couple of shops and the pub and so on. So you you do have an alternative way around as well. Thanks very much. Councillor Skinner, I guess you, please. Thank you, Chair. And um, Mr John, um, we've spoken quite a bit, haven't we, over the last day and a half. Um, I think a question in when you had the picture up um, earlier, there was a, a, a piece of land below that looked like it had some housing on it. Is that in the ownership and is that... What, what is that piece of land? I just want to understand what that is in relation, correlation with everything else there. Yeah. My rec it's not within the estate's ownership. Okay. Um, my recollection is that that was originally a scheme that was granted plan permission, I think on an exceptions led basis, to Badger Homes. Uh, probably, this is probably going back seven or eight years at least. Okay. And my understanding, don't quote me on this, is that um, the ownership has changed. Um, okay. And I think it's coming forward for a standard housing development now. I okay, can help okay, you so on, not, I can help you on that, um, uh, Philip. It's, it's now being developed for five houses and there's planning outstanding for another three houses on that site. It's uh, nothing to do with this application, no. so, so this process, so that's right. I want to just to clear that up. And just on, on just quickly on the numbers, you did say um, indicative of the numbers, working through the numbers of the process, but it was about eight, did you say 18 dwellings, right. something like yeah. that? There or thereabouts, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thanks all. Um, with no other members wishing to speak, can I invite Mr John to just go on to his next um, presentation, please? Yeah, okay, thank you. So this is the land south of Broadway. Thank you. Can I have the uh, constraints and opportunities plan, please? So this, so this is the land south of Broadway. Um, to orientate yourselves, um, this is approximately southwest of the, uh, uh, west of the, the site we've just been talking about. You've got Broadway uh, running uh, north, uh, from northwest to southeast across the north there, and then the major part of, the, of Woodbury Village um, to the north. Um, you have got an existing line of houses to the southeast, um, which run along a lane, and then the northwestern part of the site uh, adjoins um, a Cavana Homes development, which was brought forward uh, again about eight years ago, seven or eight years ago. Um, uh, and this effectively would be a, a, a second but larger phase of that development in many ways. Um, it's got a lot of opportunity and potential. Um, again, contextually, this is a village where there's, um, you know, identified as some requirement to grow. The site is um, close to the, um, the village centre in the same way as we've described previously. Um, and it's got, it's an unconstrained, it's a, again, it's a large, largely unconstrained site. You have flood zone to the southwest, and we're taking account of that. You've got a footpath. Um, show which you can see a footpath connection which runs uh, along the eastern side of that cavana development um, along the along the river edge um, also the stream edge uh, and it's shown there in that, that sort of orange uh, hyphenated line on the western side of the site um, 
Uh, and then you've got sort of countryside edge in the south southeast the corner. But it is essentially it's just straightforward um, agricultural land, not subject to any um, specific designations, not A and B, or, or etc. Um, so you've got a quite a free hand in many ways, and as long as you stay out outside the flood zone to 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 deliver quite a lot of houses on this land, it's about three hectares, three point one hectares. Um, you can get access in across different points of that site. It does have the advantage, although um, Broadway is, you know, it's a reasonably busy road, uh, but it is straight and it's, it's a long frontage. So we can get access in on various points, but the architects have shown that the access coming in off there, you see that circle with the blue light coming in off the southwest. Um, there's a number of urban design opportunities on the site. Um, first of all, you can turn the development so it fronts on Broadway uh, and you see the, the dark orange and the yellow uh, units there. And that's really the architect showing a way of um, having a nod towards the, the character, character of, of the, uh, the settlement and orientating and, you know, having buildings of a certain stature uh, looking onto Broadway to reflect the, the houses that are on the other side, uh, a number of which are listed. And then on the western side, you've got an opportunity to make the most of that footpath frontage and the stream corridor frontage by turning the houses so they, they look out onto that open countryside. And that obviously has advantages in terms of um, surveillance of the footpath, you know, security and so on, but also gives, um, you know, it's a character opportunity with those houses looking out o o onto the onto the stream, onto the countryside beyond. And it goes without saying that um, the scheme would be designed to protect the integrity of that footpath and it wouldn't be impeded in any way. Um, equally, on the southeastern corner, you've got more of a sort of rural fringe character uh, and therefore, you can design the, the houses in a way to address that. And it could be lower density and, and, and so on and so forth. So there's an interplay of opportunities here. Um, and if I can just uh, move on to the uh, illustrative layout proposition, please. Um, so this is the layout um, which proposes, um, which we're proposing. It clearly is not a fixed layout. And it's there really to give give you guys the um, indication of the site capacity and its potential um, the, and the, the layout could change in a number of different ways. What it shows is that very crudely, uh, well, I say crudely, but obviously the architects you'll see have given some thought to um, how it all fit together. You've got an opportunity there to deliver around 90 dwellings. And just by contextually, your local plan says that the site could deliver has a threshold capacity for about 65 dwellings. So you've got an opportunity there um, to meet or exceed the local authorities indicative housing requirements set so far um, according to your needs. Um, and clearly, you know, there may be uh, ways of introducing additional open space, changing the, the density of development or whatever, uh, but clearly the nature of the site allows for that to, to take place you'll see that the architects are proposing an open space area abut, which abuts the, uh, the Cavana Homes development there to act as an interface um, with that development. Um, and as, an, as a resident of this development, you can walk down uh, Broadway, potentially on the inside of that site. And again, you see a footpath there running across the front of the houses, cross over. Um, you can connect into that footwear on the the northern side of Broadway, or you can use the footpath um, connection um, on the southwestern side along the, the stream or, and or through um, the, the Cavana home scheme and thence into the town. So you've got a number of ways of, of getting around the site um, and you've got a number of ways of dealing with the, the sort of landscape characteristics and, and urban design characteristics of the proposal. So I think it's a good it's a good opportunity. You've got quite a lot of potential on this site. It's commensurate with the growth opportunities for Woodbury. It's relatively unconstrained. There are some design opportunities um, which which a scheme of this sort can do, can um, respond to. And equally, it's it, you know I'm sure this would help bring forward um, a good chunk of affordable housing. Um, so really, that's um, the end of sort of my um, proposal on that.
Thanks very much for that, Mr. John. Uh, Councillor Young, we go back to you, please. Yeah, uh, again, as Ward Councillor, um, th this site has got a, um, a lot going for it. Um, the Cavana uh, development, which was developed a couple of years ago, has fitted into the landscape really nicely into the village. Uh, and splitting the two up, um, I think there would have been uh, some concerns about them being um, mm. joining uh, joining up. So that that's great. Um, now, good to hear about these uh, preserving the footpaths. Uh, the one thing I would like to ask for is a th um, access onto the Broadway. Um, if that can be provided with a roundabout, could that come through the funding for the site? Um, because that would provide calming measures uh, yeah. because of Broadway. So, uh, as you know, it's it's a very speedy road. Yeah. Um, so. Okay. Um, if you can just answer that question, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I was involved in the Cavana scheme um, uh, previously, and and so, and we were obviously very aware of, and we got a lot of feedback on this sort of issue. Um, that was obviously a much smaller, smaller scheme, twenty units, I think it was. This is a bigger scheme, and I suspect um, uh, this is an issue that we're going to have to deal with. Because um, I know it's one of local concern, and I know it'll be one of concern for the Highways Authority. Now, I'm not a transport consultant, so but I, so I can't say exactly what the nature of the, of the solution would be, other than to say um, it, it's going to be an issue that I think will need to be dealt with, and we would need to set out a clear proposition as part of any planning application in due course on this sort of issue. Thank you very much. Does anyone else have any, any further questions? No. Mr. John, it seems like you've got off quite lightly there. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. Okay, no problem. Um, at this point, uh, we're going to have to stop for, for a lunch break. Um, because we've rattled through it for most of the time, we don't have the next uh, speaker until 10 to 2. So... You've got 50 minutes, members, or 55 minutes uh, for lunch. Excuse me, Chair. The next speaker has actually just joined the meeting if you wanted to make lunch a bit shorter. But Amy has joined us. I'd have to take advice on that because uh, obviously we're bringing forward the, the agenda. I don't know if, if people have to sit it, are coming to view different applications or so I'd have to take advice off someone I know I was picked up on it yesterday and uh, chair my, my advice would be to stick to the published schedule because we don't know who would be joining the meeting to hear specific sites and, and items at particular points so uh, I think it would be dangerous to, to run too far ahead of schedule um, I, I would suggest we stick to the original plan and break for lunch and resume at 150 as planned Okay, thank you. I'll, uh, I'll take Ed's as new legal advice. He's a new legal advisor. And we'll, uh, we'll come back at 10 to. Thank you. Thank you, members. I'll, um, I'll leave the live stream running. So, yep, yeah, just make sure um, you're all muted, please. Otherwise, uh, the public can hear what you say. Thank you.
So good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back. Um, we'll start by doing a roll call of all committee members here present. So, Wendy, can you just over to you? Sorry, excuse me. Yes, yeah, certainly, Chair. I'll start with you, Chair. So, Councillor Ledger. Present, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Davey. Present, thank you. Thank you. So, we've got apologies from Councillor Allen. Councillor Arnott. Present, thank you. Thank you. Apologies from Councillor Bailey. Have we got Councillor Blakey? We do. Present, Wendy. Thank you. Do we have Councillor Bonetta? No, nope. Councillor Chamberlain. Nope. Councillor Haywood, we've got apologies. Apologies from Councillor Howe. Councillor Ingham. Present, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Moulding. Present. Councillor Pratt. Present, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Rylance. Present, thanks. Thank you, Councillor Skinner. Present, thank you. Thank you. I'm just double checking if Councillor Chamberlain is here. No, it doesn't look like it. Okay, Chair, we'll call it for this afternoon. Back to you. Thank you very much. And then can I go over to Mrs. Shaw just to brief us on declarations of interest and then we'll just take uh, Councillor Blakey's. So over to you, Mrs. Shaw. Thank you, Chair. Yes, members, as this is an information gathering meeting for Strategic Planning Committee, it's still a requirement for members to make their declarations of interest as normal. Having made your declarations this morning, um, you may wish to raise your hand if you realise you have a further declaration or as soon as you realise during the meeting. However, if having declared a personal interest, I'd just like to remind you that th as this is not a decision-making meeting, issues of bias and predetermination do not apply. Thank you. Thanks very much. Councillor Blakey, do you have any uh, declarations you wish to make at this time? Um, no declarations that I need to make at this time that I'm aware of. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, and I see there's no hands raised, so no other member wishes to make a declaration. So with that, um, could I please bring in uh, Amy Roberts to the meeting? To Hello. Good afternoon. You have 15 minutes whenever you wish. Um, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, members, and thank you for your time this afternoon. I'm presenting on behalf of my client, GB House and Son, who's the sole owner of Site Wood 33. Wendy, do you have the PowerPoint there? Yes, I do. Let me just share my screen. Thanks. Thank you very much. So as I said, um, GB House and Son is, is my client. They're the, the sole owner of the site and it forms part of Venmore Farm in Woodbury. Uh, my client is promoting this site for housing and it's available for development now. Uh, so site reference Wood 33. This first slide here is just showing the extract from the working draft local plan. You can also see here the existing residential dwellings immediately to the east of the site and directly opposite the site on the other side of the road. Um, if you could go on to the next slide, please, Wendy. Thank you very much. Um, I've included this slide, slide just to show a bit of context. This is an aerial plan just showing, um, you can see the main part of Woodbury here, and then my client's site with the red star. You can see it's not in an isolated location. As I said previously, there are a number of existing residential properties immediately to the east and directly opposite the site on the northern side of the road. It's not an isolated location. It's just 500 metres from the arch in the centre of Woodbury and just 300 metres to the east of Woodbury Business Park. Um, if we could go on to the next slide, please, Wendy, thank you. So this just shows the site in a bit more context. Uh, the site is approximately 0.5 hectares in area. It's relatively flat and it's in a prominent location off the main road in between Woodbury and connecting down to the, to the Exmouth Road, the A376. There is an existing access to and from this main road with good visibility in both directions. You can just see that sweeping road through the site there going onto the main road. The site is previously predominantly, uh, sorry, predominantly previously developed land. As you can see on this aerial map, there are a number of existing buildings on the site, fronting the site and along the eastern boundary. 
um, is a traditional agricultural building of some local merit and interest that needs to be restored. Wendy, could we go on to the, sorry, it's going to be a little bit um, back and forth, but could we go on to the next slide? I've got a, a street view and a photograph. So here you can see the, the existing traditional building fronting the site and just running off at a perpendicular angle there into the site. Um, there's also a photo on the next slide, if we may, Wendy. It's just a, a more recent photo. So you can see the access to the properties opposite. And if we could just do go one more, please, Wendy. Uh, sorry, other way. Thank you. That's just a view from um, inside the site. So as it stands, the building have buildings have very limited beneficial use. They're, they're used for agricultural storage at the moment. Further into the site, there are a couple of small office buildings and a larger former agricultural building that's currently used as storage in association with the office use. So we really feel here there's a real opportunity to make more beneficial use and more effective use of this previously developed site and to preserve and enhance the setting of attractive traditional buildings of some local interest, which otherwise, otherwise are just going to fall further into disrepair. Um, sorry, Wendy, back again. Could we go back to the aerial plan, please, on the, the third slide? I think it's the third. third yeah, yeah, this one, perfect. Um, there's an existing bank hedge here, which you can see, which just boards the previously developed part of the site. And then there's the area of um, the green open space just to the west of that. Um, this, is, this provides a really strong landscaping boundary feature and residential development could be contained within this boundary feature to screen the development um, with open space to the west of that. So thinking about the development opportunities here, the, the National Planning Policy Framework really emphasises making effective use of previously developed land um, and the development of underused um, land and buildings should be promoted and supported. The MPPF also emphasises conserving and, and enhancing heritage assets, both designated and, des and non-designated. This site we think is suitable for a, a low density, high quality housing scheme commensurate with the village location centred around the restoration and conversion of the traditional buildings of the site with some sensitive extensions, which would give it a, a, a more rural appearance, appearance given the location of the site. Um, I've included on slide eight, if we could jump, jump forward a bit, please, Wendy. Um, next one. Lovely, thank you. So this is just an indi oh, one before. There we go. Lovely, thank you. This is just an indicative um, illustrative sketch just to give an idea of the courtyard style type of development that we're envisaging. The number of dwellings is still being explored, but we think this would be a minor residential scheme of up to eight dwellings based on initial feasibility work. And we've started on behalf of the owner um, pre-application engagement with East Evans West planning team. We've looked at, um, started to look at technical matters, the site subject to no environmental designations, no landscape designations, it's within flood zone one, which is lowest risk of flooding. Um, in terms of access, as I've said, and as we saw on the aerial plan, the site benefits from an existing direct road, road access, that's got appropriate visibility in both directions. The owner at the moment is exploring ways to improve pedestrian connectivity to the centre of the village. And if we could go on to the final slide, please, Wendy. So this is still being thought about and worked up at the moment. This is an option. So you can see Wood 33 just on the, the, the far left of the, the site. And then this the, the field to the east is within the same ownership. That's within my client's sole ownership. So we've shown one potential footpath link that could link up to the existing footpath, which runs to the east of the Broadway development. So that's an option, a way to improve pedestrian connectivity up to the, up to the village. Heritage, um, we think there's a real opportunity here to preserve and enhance the setting of attractive traditional buildings of some local interest, which as I said, otherwise are gonna fall into a further state of disrepair. Other heritage issues, we've got higher than more farm, Oh, sorry, Higher Benmore Farmhouse, which is a grade two listed building. That's 30 metres or so to the east of our site. Um, however, there are existing buildings in between our site and that listed building. And we've had some initial advice from East Evans um, conservation team. And their advice was that from a heritage perspective, some development is likely to be acceptable on this site, on the eastern part of the site. 
any developments that we um, put forward would comprise a, a detailed landscaping scheme and any potential landscape impact is very much reduced by the fact that there are existing buildings on the site. So taking all of the above into account, uh, we hope members will see the, the merits of this site um, and support the site's inclusion as an allocation for minor housing development in the new local plan. This site could make a really meaningful contribution to the district's housing land supply figures, especially if Woodbury ends up having to take um, or sort of deliver more housing than might initially be envisaged just due to the fact that it's um, one of the less environmentally sensitive um, locations in, in the district. Looking back at the, the talking back again about the, the national planning policy framework, um, it really advocates small sites and housing delivery on, on small sites, recognising that they can make an important contribution um, to meeting housing requirements of an area and that they're often built out relatively quickly. In the MPPF at paragraph 69, um, it says that to promote the development of a good mix of sites, local planning authorities should identify land to accommodate at least 10% of their housing requirements on sites no larger than one hectare. So by allocating suitable smaller sites such as this, the council's then in a strong position to meet its housing delivery targets in the event that larger developments are delayed or don't come forward at all. Thank you very much. That's all from, from me. Thank you very much for that. Uh, really helpful. We'll start with Councillor Young, please. Thank you. Uh, as a uh, ward councillor, um, I've got a couple of um, questions. Uh, listed building status, uh, I, I'm not sure which buildings are listed and which aren't, but looks like you're converting some of the uh, barns uh, and it's obviously going to be important to keep the character of the area because it's the entry into uh, Woodbury from Pink House Corner. Um, the proposal for a suggested footpath seems to be a, rather a long way. Um, the direct route is along the road, um, and I think people would be tempted to do that. Um, but I know from uh, experience that is very difficult um, for pedestrians. Um, but, but having a footpath across a field, um, is that going to be acceptable for pushing a pram? Um, I think not. Um, uh, and uh, what is going to happen to the commercial um, uh, the people uh, who are using it uh, as tenants uh, for commercial purposes now. Thank you. So just taking those in order, um, the heritage points, the, the buildings on site, they're, they're not listed. So they're, they're, they're not listed buildings. They're, we've got um, Higher Venmore Farmhouse, which is on the corner to the east of the site. That is grade two listed. Um, but as we said, there's some distance between our site and that site, and there are buildings in between. And we have had some initial advice from East Evans conservation team and they were happy in terms of impact on setting providing we kept to the, the eastern portion of the previously developed part of the site um the footpath link yeah it's you know it's still early days we're still exploring that and how that might work um as it stands at the moment um there's only a small stretch but of the of the road up to the arch that isn't pavemented at the moment. So we've started to explore ways that we can improve pedestrian connectivity. And I think the point we're trying to make at this stage, whilst we haven't done any sort of detailed technical work into it, is just making the point that there is that land ownership there within the same, you know, same ownership, same sole ownership. So there are potential opportunities to explore. And we just thought with that existing footpath to the east of the, the Broadway development, there's an opportunity to link up to that. Obviously, we'd have to design that properly and see how that would that would work, but that's an option. Um, and there you know, could be other opportunities to, to explore. But ultimately, it, it's only 500 metres from the arch. There are other residential properties on the other side of the road and immediately you know, adjacent to in the same boat. And I, I think really it's just that there are opportunities there. We realise that that's something that we, we need to, to look at and we are looking into it and then finally on the commercial point yes as you said there's some commercial use there at the moment we've got a couple it's it's very um minimal in terms of commercial use you've got a couple of small um cabin style office buildings so very sort of low density 
um, employment and then a large ancillary storage shed associated with that business. So in terms of employment on the site, it's very low density. But yes, as part of any subsequent development, we'd have to consider, we'd have to make sure that any development wasn't harmful um, to the local economy, which is the, the test at the moment. But I think because it is so de minimis, um, we, we, that's, that's how we would address, we, we know we need to address that. Um, but it's, it's not a, a, an important employment site, I'd say, for, for East Devon. Thank you very much. Councillor Skinner, we come to you, please. Thank you, and uh, that's the same question I've been asking everybody, really, but I, I, th I thought you said 80 dwellings, and, but I eight. think you said eight. Eight, yeah, not 80. I just <laughs> wanted to clarify that 80 was too many for me, but if it's eight, okay, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, thank that's you. That's certainly not 80, um, yeah. I can assure you of that. And, and eight is, it's we're still doing feasibility work, so, you know, it, it might be a bit less, it might be a little bit more, but we're thinking minor residential development. Okay, my fault. I'm getting old, you see, I'm getting old. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Does any other member wish to, to speak at this time? Okay. Well, uh, thank you very much for your time today. Really appreciate it. Um, I think we'll move on to the next presentation. But yeah, like I said, thank you very much for the presentation. Great. It's very much appreciated. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. So we move on to Alan Sydenham again uh, at land at Gilbrook Woodbury. Sydney, Sydney, are you in the in the room? Oh, I am. Yeah. Good afternoon, Dan. Good afternoon, everyone. Fantastic. Like I said, the floor's yours whenever you're ready. Um, are you able to um, put up the uh, site plan um, for me? Is that possible? I had a quick chat to. Um, Uh, that's the uh, whole town one. Were you able to, to get the um, individual Wood 10 plan or is, would you like me to try and share my screen or how's the best way to do it? Only one person can share at the time. So I think um, Ed is probably um, looking for it now. It's just uh, quite good to be able to visualise what we're talking about, I think, as part of that. So this is when you're, you're allowed to say. I, I don't have a plan of just that site on its own, sorry. Um, uh, uh, I've just got the no one. No problem, Ed. If you, can you just zoom in a little bit on the uh, on the relevant one within the, yep. the wider town plan? Is that OK? Yep. How's that? Lovely. Thank you very much. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Alan Sydenham from Heritage Property. Uh, we act for the Giles and Dybal families who own the land at uh, Gilbert Woodbury, uh, which is identified as a proposed uh, residential development allocation for approximately 60 dwellings, uh, reference Wood 10 in the um, working draft local plan and inset map you've got in front of you. The land immediately adjoins the existing built up area boundary of the village within close proximity of the center where the main retail facilities and post office are located. <clears throat> There's existing housing along the northern and eastern boundaries of the site, uh, including Gilbert Close, uh, Beaches Close, and the most recent housing development off Broadway known as Meadow View Close. The land is relatively level and currently in agricultural use with established trees and hedges around the site boundary. This ensures the site is well screened from adjoining housing, including the nearby listed Gilbrook House and the conservation area. This would minimize the potential visual and landscape impacts of any new development scheme on the site. Initial discussions have taken place with the local highway officer and suggestions made on the most appropriate uh, vehicular and pedestrian access arrangements for any new development here. This would include an extension to the existing 30 mile an hour speed limit, forming an improved and safer entrance into the village from the south. 
There are regular bus services available nearby from the centre of Woodbury going to, uh, into Exeter, South and Exmouth. Any development could provide appropriate levels of affordable housing and public open space, together with financial contributions towards any offsite improvements to existing village facilities that are required. The landowners have already been in discussion with a number of potential delivery partners to bring forward an appropriate and sensitively designed development scheme once the proposed allocation is moved forward. The site is therefore available and deliverable within a suitable time frame. Although there have been a number of sites in the village suggested for potential future development, we consider the land at Gilbrook to be the best in terms of its location, proximity to existing facilities and sustainable transport links. Also its lack of planning or technical constraints. This has been reflected in the high suitability ranking of four given to the site by the council. We are therefore fully in support of its allocation for development in the emerging East Devon local plan. If you've got any questions in relation to the site, I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you very much for that presentation. Uh, we start with Councillor Skinner, please. Um, oh, the site just disappeared. Oh, I was going to talk anyway. All right. Okay. Never mind. Um, yeah. So there's sort of, is it going to come back, Ed? Are you? Yeah, okay, because we're talking wood 10, aren't we? Correct. And on, on that, the, the scale of that size and the size of that site would be, would be what in, in acreage? Could I ask that question, please? And, and the, it's going to be followed by the question of, of what the potential housing numbers are likely to be on that, that site and what your thoughts are around the mix of those housing numbers on that site, please. Yeah, I think the, the overall acreage is about eight acres, um, but the estimate given by um, your officers within the, the uh, working draft was 60 dwellings, mm -hmm. which, you know, by normal um, uh, standards would probably be deemed to be quite low density. But um, uh, in terms of a housing mix, we haven't got as far as actually uh, okay. identifying what that would comprise. But my guesstimate based on a, a, a relatively low density solution is that uh, you know there would be um, a, a mix of the, the normal two three and four bedroom sort of house type designs okay thank you thank you chair thanks very much for that councillor skinner councillor young we go to you please thank you chair um two issues on on this site um one is uh, one of the boundaries is the Gilbrook, um, obviously um, by the name of the site. Um, there is flooding issues on, on that site. I wonder what flood zone it is in um, and also how we're going to deal with the riparian ownership of, of the site. Um, and then the, the other issue, again, is access. Um, it would unlock the, um, the pedestrian access for the previous application if this one came forward um, but um, how is access to the main village going to be from here because you either uh, go back to uh, the pink house uh, corner road or uh, is there going to be access into the um, uh, main part of the village uh, through um, close to the post office all through the uh, meadow view. Thank you. Okay, uh, deal with those uh, three issues uh, then. Let's deal with access first. Um, as I said in my presentation, we've spoken to the local highway officer and undertaken some um, initial investigations into land ownership and um, uh, adopted uh, um, highway ownership uh, along the existing uh, access road. Um, there are a couple of uh, potential solutions um, to joining um, and creating new footpaths that would link in with the existing footpaths that follow up into the uh, into the village centre. Um, there's also the potential for bringing a, a footpath connection into uh, Gilbrook Close um, through uh, our client or the landowner's ownership. Um, so there's there's a couple of ways in which that. Uh, linkage can be made 
Um, and as I said, that would uh, obviously help, I think, in terms of forming a new gateway into the, uh, the village. We're not trying to do anything that would benefit any uh, land to the south, but yes, <laughs> if we were to improve it, then that, that would extend the existing uh, footpath network further, further to the south. Um, in terms of flooding, uh, yes, the, the brook runs along the, uh, the northern boundary of the site. Uh, we've done uh, some initial work, but you know, not a detailed investigation to be able to come up with a scheme at this stage. But we're pretty confident that uh, setting aside um, part of the site in that area for uh, flood mitigation, um, uh, along with any necessary um, uh, works uh, associated with attenuation, would ensure that uh, that would comply with um, uh, the, the local flood authorities' requirements. Um, the final question you had, Councillor, I think was with regard to ownership, and I was a bit confused by that. The site's in private ownership. W what were you referring to as far as riparian ownership? Sorry. Yeah, the ri riparian ownership for who's going to be responsible for the maintenance of of the river, of, of the stream. Um, at the, I'm not sure if it is in, in uh, environment agency uh, responsibility or uh, death and flood team resp uh, responsibility, but um, that stream there does overtop quite quite often, um, and it does need some maintenance. Okay, well, I'll be happy to look into that. I, I must admit, I don't know where the um, where the boundary line runs um, in relation to. We certainly own. The bank on the on the southern side, but I don't know whether that extends into the actual watercourse itself. But I'm happy to look into that and, and work out what is a, a most appropriate solution to deal with the issue. Yeah, you, you're responsible for the ownership up to the halfway line, so to speak. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Blakey. Did you have anything you wish? To... I saw your hand go up and gone back. Uh, uh, I did. I, I, yes, Chair. I, I took it down again because Councillor Young asked the question I was going to regarding flooding. Right. Fantastic. Okay. Um, if no other members wish to speak, I'd just like to thank Mr. Signum again. Uh, thank you very, very much for your time. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, everybody. Bye. So now, if I may welcome Oliver Keats to the meeting. Uh, this is to do with land at Cliff St. Mary and it's listed as South 03. Mr. Keats, are you with us? Mr. Keats is in, but he's currently on mute at the moment. Is that better? That is better. Sorry, apologies. Um, can you hear me okay? We can hear you okay, yeah. We can't see you, but we can hear you. Okay, fabulous. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity to talk this afternoon. Um, I was going to just sort of maybe just just sort of give a short presentation for five or six minutes and perhaps take a few questions if, if that was if that was OK, please. That'd be fantastic. Whenever um, you're ready. Fantastic. Thank you. So good. Good afternoon, councillors. Um, my name is Oliver Keats of OBK Planning, the retained planning consultant in relation to the parcel of land at Cliff St. Mary off the A3052. I'm going to outline today why I think that this site, located between the recently constructed Cavana Homes housing development and showground site, should be included for housing in the new local plan. This site, identified as SOWT03 in the working draft of the local plan, dated December 2021, measures about five acres, as shown, as you can see on that plan, um, and is suitable for some 50 open market and affordable homes, together with open space provision and appropriate landscaping. I support strategic policy one, settlement hierarchy in the working draft, which includes Clist to St Mary as a service village, owing to its access to a range of jobs, community facilities and services, where some growth, including housing, should take place in the future. The village clearly has all of the facilities required to support further housing provision. It is clear from the evidence base of the working draft local plan that the only identified reason for not allocating this land for housing 
is that it would represent an extension of the urban area into the countryside. This would be the case with all greenfield development by its nature. And as noted above, the impact of developing this site would be minimal as it is already bounded on two sides by existing development. Additionally, the existing boundary to the, to the immediate east of the site, namely the show site, prevents unfettered urban sprawl. Therefore, this is not an issue with this site. This particular site is very suitable for housing, being a logical extension of the village, surrounded on two sides by existing development to the immediate south and west, and up to a clearly defined and defensible boundary in the form of the showground to the east. Therefore, this sensible extension to Clist St. Mary is not ribbon development, but sensible rounding off. The Highway Authority have, in, have agreed an access in principle to this site directly off the A3052, offering a safe and convenient access. We can all agree that this is a sustainable location with a footpath and cycle link adjacent to the site and a bus stop in close proximity. Develop, development of this site would also provide an opportunity to complete a missing section of the adjacent footway link, thereby improving the safety of pedestrians in the area, a significant benefit which would result from this development. All modes of access to this site are good and would not be via what we know to be narrow substandard roads as found in the historic core of the village. This site links and relates well to the centre of Clist St Mary. A phase one ecological assessment has been carried out and there are no ecological reasons why this site cannot be developed. Additionally, there are no heritage assets or environmental designations which would preclude this site coming forward for housing. My client's landscape architect has assessed this site and concluded that there would be no landscape or visual impact issues as a result of this site being developed. In conclusion, there are no technical or legal impediments to this logical site coming forward for housing development in the short to medium term to meet the district's housing numbers, including local affordable housing needs. Other larger sites and the new proposed settlement will take time to come forward. And this site with a, with a willing landowner and developer on board could be developed in the shorter term. Thank you for the opportunity to present to you today. I'm very happy to take any questions you may have. Um, alternatively, please feel free to contact me at a later stage if you think of anything further. Many thanks. Thank you very much for that, Mr. Keats. Uh, Councillor Skinner, we go to you first, please. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, and thank you, Mr. Keats, for your presentation. Two questions, really. One is uh, number of dwellings, please, as what's it, of what you are, are expecting. Uh, and then I'll follow up with a secondary question, if you don't yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah of course. Um, we, we, we've had a we've had a, a, a sketch a sketch layout done. Um, obviously quite early days, and we think it has a, a capacity of around fifty units. Or well, that'll depend, depend, of course, on on mix. Okay. But 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 around fifty units or so, we we, we would anticipate at this stage. And my second question through you, Chair. Is that okay? Yeah, of course. My, my second question is, is any of this land used for car parking for the Devon County Show? And what impact would it have on the Devon County Show um, operation? Bearing in mind that if my memory serves me correctly, the Cavana Homes application was one that was actually one on appeal through the lack of our five-year housing land supply. So it was not sure. a site that was actually put, put by design it was it was gathered there really by default and then you're hanging next to that one which is a site which wasn't in in our plans if you might have it now that doesn't make any difference per se here because they, it's there and we got it it's that's the way sure. it is and you're going to that's fine but that's my question really lining lining around what the impact this has on the Devon County show because I'm yeah I've got quite th th uh, thoughts about the show show going how important it is to our area thank you yeah sure I'm, I'm I mean certainly the land 
Um, I, I, I'll be, be frank, I would need to sort of revert back. I don't believe there's, that, that um, I'm not aware that it's been used for parking, but I, I, I could be wrong. The land, um, my understanding is that it's um, privately owned and, and, and isn't in the ownership of, of the show site. Um, rather than give an inaccurate answer, could, could, I, could I come back to you on that? Would that, would that be okay? Absolutely no well, I wonder if, if through you, Chair, whether we could actually come back come back to me fine, but please copy in the chairman of this meeting so as he gets it as well. I don't want me in, sure. in isolation. It'll, it'll, all no. to, it'll all go to Wendy and uh, right, it'll good. be formulated yeah. within the minutes. Good, um, thank you. Let's keep, just for, for my reference, I, I see obviously there's another site that's been promoted as well. Is that any? Is that also in the ownership of your client, so it's South Eleven, I think. Uh, it so I'm just looking on the plan. Actually, is that the site, the other side of the village? To to I, I think would be to the north side. Is that a plan coming up, or I can? Yeah. So the the one to to the north of you. I'm, I'm hope. Yeah, I would say it's to the north. Nine and one, yeah, zero nine and zero one. Yes. Um, I don't believe that's in 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 the same ownership. No. Right. Okay. No problem. Thank you. Councillor Davey, we come to you, please. Okay, thank you. Um, could you just clarify how you envisage access to the A3052? Um, I couldn't quite see how you were going to achieve that since there's quite a lot of housing in the way or the village hall. Um, so I, I, perhaps you could clarify that. Of course, um, I, I, um, we've had a sketch done actually by um, a, a traffic consultant um, that shows a dedicated right hand turn. I've actually got the benefit of this in front of me, but I, I could possibly send that to you if that, if that was if you were happy to, to receive that. So it shows a dedicated right turn. I think a, a very similar arrangement to um, to, to Cavana Homes and to, to the access arrangements there. Um, and it's something that has been discussed with. Devon County Council and I think technically and in principle it's something that they feel would would, would work and would be would provide a, a safe and appropriate access on onto onto um the, the A3052 but, but um, would you, would you, I could certainly send you that it's quite a detailed design that's that's put together um showing precisely how that access would, would work is that in front of you in hard copy or digitally Good. It's a hard copy in front of me, actually. Okay. Um, apologies. No problem at all. Councillor Young, could we come to you, please? Yeah, um, as I passed uh, this on the way to pick my papers up, um, uh, I know this site very well. Um, there's a cycleway on the pavement on that side of the road, mm. and the access out on the main road would cut across the cycleway. Uh, during the... Um, during the uh, the show, uh, there wouldn't be any way of coming out uh, to turn right, so you'd have to turn left towards um, West Point and then uh, and then uh, turn around further on and then go back into Exeter, which was a bit of a problem. Yeah. Um, there, there are now at now peak times there is problems coming out onto that main road. Um, sometimes the, the the traffic does go back all the way almost to um, Hill Barton. So, sure. no, but um, other than that, no, I can't give you any further information, but um, I, I would be concerned about the, uh, the cutting of the, um, of the road, cutting the cycleway. Um, the the Cavana, Cavana um, uh, uh, estate uh, access is a bit of a problem for cyclists already. So another one would create create even more now if there's a way of overcoming that i'd like to hear thank you yeah i mean a, a slight apologies really because um if yeah, i've got this sketch in front of me and so i've got this advantage of seeing the drawing and i'll i'll, I'll certainly look to forward that on over the the, the the next few days um what what this drawing shows I, I'm, I'm actually a chartered planner not a, a highway engineer but so you'll perhaps forgive me but um the foot the cycle and footway um actually um is set for so it loops back in almost into the site so that um cars come into the site um and um 
so the, the footway wouldn't run parallel to the, the the a road it would sort of kick back into the site slightly which i, I believe provides a, a much safer solution what 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 i'd quite like to do if i could rather than me give you sort of almost a, a, an inaccurate or half an answer could i send this to you and i could perhaps ask the the, the highway consultant to provide some um commentary on it as well as that, to how that would work and how you see that working yeah i think that would be most helpful okay that's great i'll i'll seek to do that over the sort of coming coming few days or so if, if, if that's okay yeah fantastic um i don't see any other members wishing to speak so mr keats i'd just like to thank you for the presentation today and thank you for your time no, um, thank you for the opportunity today and um, apologies I couldn't give a sort of full answer on the access, but um, we'll, we'll certainly send something to you over the, over the coming days or so. Very much appreciated. Thank you. Enjoy thank you very time. much again. Thank you. We are 20 minutes ahead right now. We Do we have... Oh, yeah, he's already there. Mr John, go ahead. Yep. I am. I'm happy to present now if you'd like me to. Okay, so um, this is the land east of Exton, Farm Exton, um, uh, the constraints and opportunities analysis then. Um, <clears throat> to just give you a bit of orientation as to where we are on the site, you've got the main part of Exmouth, in the, uh, sorry, Exton rather, immediately to the west there, you can just see the edge of it. Um, <clears throat> and we are, have Mill Lane to the south, and off the sort of bottom left of the um, of the slide, you have the puff the road, the access road that leads to the Puffing Billy Public House, uh, an extra railway station, a couple hundred meters beyond that. Um, <clears throat> so it's very um, it's very well related to the settlement boundary um, of of Exton. <clears throat> You've got the Commando Training Centre immediately, sort of south southwest of the of the site as well. Um, <clears throat> In, in terms of the sort of immediate environs of, of the site, you've got the former Exton farm there on the southwestern corner. You can see the um, the, the build the various um, uh, buildings um, uh, outlined uh, in black and white, uh, and that's a mixture of uh, sort of more modern agricultural buildings um, and um, uh, and more traditional buildings. Uh, and that's in the hopefully in the final throes of being uh, of the planning application process at the moment. Um, uh, and and uh, with the, with the hope that it'll get planning permission uh, through you guys in the in the near future. But that, that that's obviously with you. Um, uh, contextually, there's other properties, uh, residential properties on the right around the site, and you can just see them outlined out, outlined there um, to the immediately to the east and, and up to the north. Actually, there's a, a sort of outlying area of Exton. Um, uh, uh, and quite a few houses up there to the north. So, so contextually, this is quite close to the centre of Exton, um, uh, and it's it's um, certainly not uh, an outlying sort of part in the sense of uh, the sort of uh, residential and building characteristics in in and around the site. There are some constraints. Um, there's there's parts of the um, uh, the adjoining Exton farm which you can see in orange is a listed building. Um, that's being taken into account as part of the uh, residential scheme uh, that's there. Uh, and then you've got the flood uh, floodplain, which runs along the brook to the south, um, uh, which I mean, you can see there, it's there in, in blue. Uh, there's a residential dwelling up in the northeastern corner there, and you can see the, the red hatched line, which is kind of a, a distance setback requirement. Um, so, um, so locationally, the, it's a good site. Um, there are some constraints, but equally, the, this is quite a, you know, um, the site is large enough to be able to uh, deal with those sorts of constraints. Um, so just if we can move on to the illustrative layout then, please. So um, the illustrative layout that we've had prepared shows uh, 40 units um, on the site. Um, with green infrastructure and so on. And that's a little in excess of the, the 20 units which the draft local plan has identified for the site. So it's got some capacity to meet or potentially exceed according to your needs um, the, um, the identified requirement. Um, the, the solution that we've come, and as ever, it's, you know, it, there are other ways of, of, of working up a layout for the site. So this is only a good start, starting point. Um, 
uh, addresses those constraints that I set out to you. Um, shows an access onto Mill Lane to the south there. Um, equally, there's access points. Um, the nature of the frontage means that whilst Mill Lane is a rural lane, you can get a second or a second or primary access potentially up further around the corner, probably not too far up the top there, but around that bend up to where that new dwelling is. Um, you've got opportunities to get a, an access point there um, to address any specific highways requirements. And equally, that, that allows pedestrian permeability as well through potentially through the site um, in the same way as the Exxon Farm development has got some permeability through it for that purpose as well. Um, you've got um, the ability to um, sit outside the, the floodplain there and you'll see the setback. Um, really, the floodplain is constrained to the lane itself. Uh, and then you've got the ability to set the scheme in to take account of the residential proximities where they exist, northeastern corner. Uh, and I'm not to obviously overcook the um, the development of the site. Um, so, so this is a lay. This is the layout. It would at 40 dwellings or even at 20, it would be able to accommodate some affordable housing, um, and it would provide a development which um, is able to assist with the um, um, the growth opportunities for Exton as a service as a proposed service village. Um, so, any questions? Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Young, over to you. It's me again. Um, yeah, I know the site well. Um, there are tremendous flooding issues at this location. And um, uh, most of it is surface water coming down Mill Lane from the top. Um, and if there's no, a, no, it, there might be a solution if this development comes forward to do a, f a flood scheme at the same time as uh, um, uh, uh, doing this development because seven times last year um, Mill Lane at the bottom there in the floodplain was flooded out uh, the the traffic lights at um, um, at that uh, uh, road, big road junction onto main uh, oh. Smith Road uh, prevented traffic to go through um, for, and uh, cars were floated uh, literally away. So some sort of um, a flood alleviation uh, at the same time as this development mm. uh, could go well hand in hand. And mm. now I have speak, spoken to um, the estate on a number of occasions on this one. Yeah, Thank you. I, I'm aware of that sensitivity actually. And just thinking about, I'm just looking at the layout now, as I say, this is a, you know, a preliminary layout. And we would want to look at that issue. I know, for example, you've expressed those these these uh, points in respect of the Exxon Farm development, but you know, I'm showing a, a development of 40 dwellings. You know, you could see a situation whereby we may wish to row that back a little bit. And the southeastern corner, if the flooding is actually as you you know coming down the middle lane, there there could be a flood attenuation uh, response in the southeastern corner or on that side of the site at least. You know, and that's that that could be accommodated once we've got some more technical information on where that flooding is coming from. The point being, there's, there's a fair bit of um, flex in the in the scheme layout, and therefore the number of dwellings at this site could accommodate to address these sorts of issues. Um, if if I can Thank just come back on that, um, that our engineers have looked at uh, that site, and we'll be happy to share um, Thank you. our. Uh, yeah, experience on that side. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Ingham, we come to you, please. Thanks, Stuart. So, um, how many affordable homes are you thinking of at this moment? What do you see? Um, it depends upon the number of units, obviously, and that goes back to viability ultimately. And obviously, uh, it goes back to the local authority settling on what the what is it's, it's expected affordable housing requirement would be, um, you know, a start, the position will always be, it'll be a policy compliant affordable housing scheme, unless there's specific reasons why not, and we'd have to make that case to you in the normal way. Um, so I don't know what the, the, we've got no affordable housing figure in mind, um, but, uh, and we will be driven by your policy requirements, such as they you know, end up being, and any particular issues in this issue, you know, in uh, in this location in a normal way. So it sounds kind of evasive. I'm not trying to be evasive. Um, you know, 
it will be what you ask it to be. Um, you know, will be led by your policy as it emerges. Very much, Ben. You want to come back? I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Chair. It's just to point out that, to my knowledge, I don't think there are any affordable homes in Exton. So it'd be nice to mm. plan in. You know, mm. uh, uh, make this a, a, a robust possibility mm. rather than more of the same, which mm. doesn't serve the community. In, in my opinion, thank you, Chair. Thanks very much. Councillor Blakey, we come to you, please. Thanks, Chair. Um, I appreciate that the, the, the plan that you've shown is just a sketch at this stage. It's, it's very early days, um, but it does include quite a bit of um, open space. Um, bearing in mind what's already been asked with regard to um, the potential for flooding, how would you propose to manage that, um, that leftover, if you like, green open space on that side? And uh, actually, how would it be funded? Yeah, uh, good point. I mean, um, to some extent, these, these, these are questions for a planning application as and when there's an allocation, if there's an allocation as you go forward, and detailed discussions on, on you know, the extent of the flooding, um, what that might mean for the, uh, uh, the recreational open space provision and so on. But clearly, we, um, there will be a position whereby something needs to be provided. And typically... Um, these sorts of uh, facilities, you know, be it um, well any form of green infrastructure, is typically funded through a management agreement, uh, which the residents pay for, and that seems to be the the normal way of doing things these days, rather than simply hiving it off to the um, uh, to become a responsibility for the, to the local authority, uh, which is the traditional way of doing it. Much for that. I think a lot of the questions you're getting today are, are more viability questions rather mm. than on the allocations. So apologies, Councillor Skinner. We go to you. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm in. I'm quite interested knowing when I know Exton very well, and I'm quite interested to know that a scheme that has 40 dwellings. And I and I do bear in mind, Mr. John, that that is a, an app. You know, it, it could range between 20 to 40, and you may want to wheel mm. that back, and, and there could be some affordable and there's other things to do i get all of that but how many houses are in exton then because if, if if we take 40 as an example mm. i wouldn't like to say how many more houses there was in exton and how this is going to um it is quite a big percentage jump from housing numbers in in exton as, as a small place i'm just interested in that really i don't know um, if you had any figures on no i i don't have that figure to hand um, we're taking reference really from the fact that uh, Exton is identified as a, a service village and therefore, you know, with the potential to accommodate some growth. And then really looking at the, the opportunity for where that growth could sensibly go. go. Uh, and we've shown, you know, we've set out a field that could accommodate um, up to 40 yeah. subjects of those. Could be less, to be perfectly honest, and particularly yeah. once you start to deal with suds and flooding requirements. Um, I, Exton to me doesn't strike me as a, a particularly, not these days, um, a particularly small settlement. Um, it's not a big settlement, but clearly it's not, you know, it is a, it's not a small village. Um, there's actually been quite a lot of growth. If you think of Exton essentially um, being north of where the Puffing Billy is, all those houses to the south, and then going quite, quite a way along, a long way actually up the, uh, the estuary there. That's, I don't know what the answer is, but there's quite a few houses there now, isn't there? Uh, and this would be, so this wouldn't represent an over, I don't think, um, an over domination in terms of the level of growth. But it might, you know, but it might be that, you know, there's, it's not 40 houses, it's 20 or 25. Yeah. Sorry, it wasn't a trick question, Mr. John. No, no, I, was, I don't I was, answer. I was, yeah. I'm just trying to get in, yeah. in my head. Yeah. I'm just trying to get the balance yeah. between a, a yeah. community that is of a set yeah. size. And yeah. then you drop 40 houses on them and that yeah. would scare a lot of people yeah. in a lot of ways. And it's just yeah. how we get to that balance. But thank yeah. you very much for your answer. This question. Thank you. I think it's a, it's a point well made, Councillor Skinner, with the proposals made in the draft at the moment. This is getting the same level of growth as Fenerton, which Fenerton's probably two or three times the size of Exton. I would say. Councillor Young, we come to you. Yeah, just to say, I, I believe it's about 150 to 170 houses in Exton at the moment. Thanks very much. Um, no other questions? 
we don't have the the next speaker in uh, Wendy, do we? With that in mind, Mr. No. John, would yeah. you be, would you be willing to do your other presentations? Go yes, of course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just, um, committee, we need to take that. Obviously, that's a, a change to the proposed schedule. So, could we just take a quick vote on that? That we're all happy to to alter the schedule. Do you want that by hands, or are we just going to say it? Yeah, or? just just yes or no. Green ticks, red crosses. Oh, green ticks. Right. Uh, hang on. Oh, hang on. Bear with me. Oh, it disappears. Fantastic. That's overwhelmingly in favour. Mr. John, over to you whenever you're ready. Yeah, OK, thank you. Um, Wendy, could I have the presentation for the Land of Bell Street Otterton? Please. Yeah, bear with me. I'm just opening it up at the moment. Thank you. If you can just leave it on the title sheet for a sec. Um, yes. Thank you. Um, just, just a point of clarification. Uh, it, it's referred to um, in, in the documentation as land at Bell Street, um, but we've always submitted these details as, the, as, as land at behind Hayes, Otterton. Um, Bell Street is actually a separate location. Um, and I just, want, just wanted to um, avoid any confusion uh, in terms of how I, re how I reference the site going on. Um, Thank you, Wendy. Could I have the constraints and opportunities analysis plan? So this is the site. Um, it's about 1.2 hectares of land. Um, so quite a sizable chunk of land in Otterton. And it's slap bang in the centre of the village. Um, so you have the, um, just to orientate you, again, you've got the, the brook which runs down 4th Street, I think it is. Um, and you can see the, in blue the flood line there. And that, that reflects, that kind of runs along Four Street. Um, you've got the um, uh, you've got the mill a mill away to the left. Um, you've got it's 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 pretty much uh, opposite the um, uh, the pub there, which is immediately to to the northwest. You've got the school to the left, um, the village hall and the shop, all all of which are within a couple of minutes walk of the, uh, of of this piece of land. Um, so in principle, um, in terms of the impact on the countryside and so on, uh, this, is a, this is a good site, but it does have some constraints, um, you know, not with the fact it's surrounded on four sides by houses. Um, there's a historic character to Otterton, which uh, would need to be respected. And you see that in the conservation area there to the, uh, to the north um, in the hatch lines. Um, and with some listed buildings uh, on 4th Street, I think it is, and to, to the west there. Another one's shaded in orange. Um, you've got a number of features on the land. Essentially, it's paddock or, you know, akin to that. Um, it's got a boundary of hedgerows and it's got a, a sort of tree line, slightly thin, but with some decent trees in it, um, bisecting the site. And you see that in, in the land. You've also got access from Orchard Close, and you see the um, the double out, double arrow there on the eastern side, northeastern side. That's Orchard Close, which is a uh, a state seventies, eighties type houses, uh, which was I think was in the back in the day was brought forward by the estate, um, and so there's an access reserved over there. And then you've got field accesses onto behind A's the lane, um, and, and in the corner there. And again, you've got double headed arrows there. So you've got quite a lot of land. It's in a very good location from a, being within the settlement, um, but there are some constraints to it. Um, if you can just flip onto the illustrative layout for me, please. So the local plan has the um, site identified for around 10 units. This layout shows 11. Um, it is, this layout shows a number of ways, or there are a number of ways in which the layout could come forward in a way which addresses the character of the village um, and, and those constraints which I'll refer to. Um, so it's shown predominantly as coming in off Orchard Close um, and then with, with uh, I think, seven or eight unit uh, dwellings being served off there on the eastern side. And then that's one parcel and then the, the other parcel with that tree line there 
um, is a smaller level of development. And we've shown that has been accessed off behind, le- behind Hayes. The reason we've shown an access off there is because there's an existing field opening in there. And that might could be widened to touch just to allow service of four the th- for three units wouldn't wouldn't support the entire development i don't think but it could be possible and that's a way of just um breaking up the development equally an alternative solution which we've talked about is to provide an access in off orchard close and then um, coming through the southern very thin end of the of the tree line and providing an access into that western half of that way the layout can be organised so it respects the character of the land, the historic buildings by setbacks. Um, and we think there could be opportunities there to, to do something like a community orchard or a local area of play, which have been shown there. Um, something which, being in this central, sustainable part of the village, is something which you know we can op- open up the site because currently the site is a field, but it's private in private use. There's no public access to it. And you could open it up and that can then become part of the community good for, for the scheme, as well as providing those uh, 11 or so houses. Um, uh, so there's opportunities there to deal with that. Um, and I think the, the fact you've got that tree line through the site um, helps, helps actually helps to break up uh, the development of the site. Um, in terms of its visibility and impact on the, the surrounding area, the whole area is washed over as AOMB which is an additional constraint to development. But equally, if you are going to propose some growth in Otterton, and and the local plan does propose to do that, this is a location where actually the impact on the AMP um, will be very modest because it is so well contained within the existing settlement. The issues come forward are really to be resolved are how to deal with the the immediate relationships rather than the impact on the character of the wider area. so I think this is this is a you know is a there's some complexities to it, but it's a good site um, as the estate as I've said pre on previous presentations. This is the sort of site where by, where the estate you know can can really bring forward their their approach to design biodiversity and so on uh, and take a really proactive attitude to um, to development. Uh, and so I think this is a, a good a good location with with which is sustainable and those has plenty to offer. So thank you very much. Um, we will start with Councillor Pratt, please. Thank you. Uh, in regard to the AOMB, um, it does appear that you're retaining all trees and hedgerows, but perhaps you could kindly confirm. I think we would have to, as part of, part, part of a planning application. The carrot, the AOMB location makes the character of these quite important, uh, and in any event. You know, these are legitimate site design constraints you'd have to work around. Um, you know, we would have to survey the standard of those trees, but my expectation is that that belt would rete- would have to remain in ditto the hedgerows, not least because of their ecological characteristics. Thank you. Thanks very much. Councillor Skinner, we come to you, please. Thank you, Mr. John. And and I, I see you put up, uh, you know, some ideas about uh, the village. It's a quite a unique village, actually, Otterton. It's a really lovely little village when you go there. And, and if you've never been to Otterton before you turn up, you'd think you're living in an aspect. But one of the things that don't take you to living in an aspect is the cars that are up and down parked on the road. And it's quite horrendous, the amount of cars that are there. It's not just Otterton. I've got my own village of Tallerton where I live. You can nearly machines going up and down the road here we can nearly get a combine through when you've got to go combining and you'd think the farmers were um you know a, 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 an endangered species that are coming up and down the road and they can't even get down the village so but in the last in, in a in your thought process in going forward in wanting to create what i would have thought was community was to look at perhaps something like and my, my question is going to be look at something like that's been a real problem with parking in Otterton whether or not there is uh, within your community and place shape and hub and that that you put in your plan whether or not you could have some space there for what I would have thought the community would have really mm. looked for or the village the parish council and the, the like there I think would really welcome a car park but sure that's that's for you so, to add into your into your reflection into your scheme going forward yeah, just just on on that point, this is it's fair to say this is at the very heart of the estate's ownership. 
um, and the family would take, you know, the, fam- the family behind yeah. the, uh, behind right. the state would take a very, very close interest in those, this location in terms of, for example, design. But also, you know, we are we are aware of that issue in Otterton about car parking, and the estate has been in discussions with the parish council on these sorts of issues. And it's entirely possible that, um, provided you can deliver it in a way that's not harmful to the character of the building of, yeah. of the of the area, uh, for the reasons I've talked about, uh, that's something that they they would look at. I mean, you know, we know that that is an issue of concern, um, and there are, there is. So I suspect sufficient flexibility within that site for some car parking to be provided. You know, the estate addressed that issue in, at the Cavana schemes in Woodbury um, some years ago when that, again, was a similar on, on street car parking problem. And they provided a car park for local residents to use. And that's been successful. And as far as I can tell, it's achieved what it was meant to achieve. And you can see a situation whereby they would take a similar approach in this instance. You know, subject it has to work from a technical point of view and a landscape point of view and so on. But it's certainly something that we that they would take on board. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. John. Thanks very much, Councillor Blakey. We come to you. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, given the density of the surrounding housing, it does look as though um, the the density here is obviously very low, and on the western side, particularly. Uh, where illustratively you've got the um, the community orchard or whatever it may be, there does seem to be quite a lot of space there that is essentially being ignored. Um, it, it, perhaps a lost opportunity. Is there a technical reason to do with ground conditions or anything of the sort that, um, that buildings couldn't be put there, or um, no. it's, it's just altruistic? No, no, no. It's not not pure. I mean, the the, the scheme that we've shown is, as I say, there's only. It's, there are one of there's obviously lots of iterations of of development for this site, and this is but one of them. But it's one which is intended to address the um, some of the, the constraints we talked about, you know, residential relationships, historic buildings, and and so on. But equally, obviously, cognizant in in villages like this, um, you know, in central sites, you know, there's often an expectation that there'll be some wider community benefit. And that is one example of, of that. And we've shown a uh, lap and a uh, community orchard. You know, I've just been discussing uh, with Councillor Skinner, the possibility of a car park, which we know is an issue. So that might be an alternative. And that might then mean that there's a way, you know, the need to change the layout and, and so on. Um, there was no technical reason why that site's undeveloped. At all, there's no terrain to terrain concerns that we are aware of. There's no land stability. There's nothing like that. It's simply um, the designers coming up with a solution which delivers on or around the local plans expectation about what this site could deliver, ten units, and then looking at how to how to address some of the site constraints, the proximity issues. Okay. Well, thanks. Thanks very much, Councillor Arnold. We'll come to you. Thank you, Chair. Sorry for not being on the screen. I'm out and about at the moment. Um, I suppose declaring a tiny personal interest. Uh, my wife is uh, good friends with um, uh, one, with a member of the Clinton family. And I suppose because of that, I'd like to ask Mr. John. Um, I, I wonder if he misspoke a bit just now, which was that the family would be paying particular attention really effectively to the design because, you know, Alterton is close to their hearts and all the rest of it. But, I mean, what I need to ask you, Mr John, is presumably the family are paying close attention to the design of all of the many uh, site proposals you've put forward already as far as the quality of that design is concerned. Yes, I mean, they, inevitably they would. I mean, and clearly you, um, they they don't, you know, they are ultimately the... the um, they're, they're ultimately responsible for everything that comes forward and therefore they have the last say and scrutiny of everything that comes forward. So yes, you're absolutely right. They, they view everything and they always apply, you know, a, a, a family perspective on things. And they're not here and I'm, I can't speak for them, but I've worked with them uh, and the, the property team for a long time now. Uh, and really my point was um, they will recognize that Otterton is a, you know, acutely sensitive location, you know, and it's one which is, you know, at the very heart of their the estate's interests. Um, 
and the, you know, therefore I would expect the degree of scrutiny on a location like this to be particularly acute for that reason. Yeah, thank you. Can I just come back quickly? I suppose um, just a sort of little NB would be following the real difficulty uh, that surrounded the, uh, the loss of a doctor's surgery in Newton Popperford only about 18 months, two years ago. I do think it's important to advise the family that um, all of the sites should be seen as being of, of equal merit. So just because they're in Exmouth, for example, doesn't mean that they shouldn't be considered as sensitive as, as Otterton. Mm. And I think that's a helpful point moving forward. But yeah. thank you, Chair, for that. Thank you, Mr. John. Thanks very much for that. I don't see any other members wishing to speak. So again, thank you, Mr. John. We'll go to one other pres uh, presenter and then come back to you for your final one. Of course, thank you. Thank you. Um, could I now welcome Lucy White to the meeting? Lucy, are you with us? I am, yes, hello. Hi, good afternoon. You have 15 minutes, present it however you wish. Um, okay. Am I okay to share my screen? I've got a PowerPoint. I Shall think I just... Wendy, Wendy can make you a co-host and it should be, you should be able to. Your co-host. Okay, I'll give that a go then. Let's see if I can. Yeah. Can you see that? We can indeed, thank you. Okay, brilliant, I'll start that off. There we go. Right, well, thank you for your time today. Um, my name's Lucy White. Uh, I'm a planning consultant representing uh, Placeland Limited, uh, who are promoting land east of Georgia Lane in Kilmington. Uh, site uh, is identified as Kilm 09 in the working draft of the local plan. It comprises two and a half hectares of flat agricultural land, which is sandwiched between the A35 to the north there uh, and the existing built up area of Kilmington Village uh, to the south and to the east. Uh, the site is accessible. Placeland has engaged with the highway authority um, who have uh, no issues in principle with achieving a vehicular access into the site. Uh, Kilmington benefits from a neighbourhood plan which is reaching an advanced stage in its preparation. That neighbourhood plan, as would always be the case, is aligning with the adopted local plan uh, through to 2031. Uh, and Kilmington has taken the opportunity off the back of the local plan strategy 27 to identify some areas for growth uh, outside the existing built up um, limits of the village. Um, and as I say, that's reached an advanced stage. They're hoping to have that plan um, uh, before a referendum later this year. As part of that neighbourhood plan, they have identified the eastern field of land east of George Lane for residential development. Um, the allocation is for around 14 dwellings, of which 50% would be affordable. Uh, they suggest three self-build plots and four open market dwellings. As part of the uh, principles within the policy, uh, they would like to see um, limited loss of hedges and trees, obviously try and retain those as part of the scheme and provide most importantly a 10 metre buffer on the northern edge where the site adjoins the A35. Uh, and they've also suggested considering orchard planting, strategic planting and other landscaping. So really a framework of landscaping for the site. Looking beyond into this working draft local plan, obviously that extends uh, development proposals over to 2040. Um, and so planning beyond that neighbourhood plan period. And Kilmington is identified as a tier four settlement, uh, which forms part of the focus for growth um, uh, to deliver the housing required for the plan period. Uh, Kilmington, as you'll see on figure one there, is expected to um, deliver uh, some part of that housing requirement with 24 dwellings identified. So within the working draft, uh, Kilm 09 identifies 
the larger site, which is the, the full extent of the ownership that I showed you at the start of this PowerPoint. Um, as you can see, the, this L, reverse sort of L shape is what's identified within the neighbourhood plan um, for the 14 dwellings. So the site has been extended, as shown in the working draft, but the capacity of the site um, is still showing as 14 dwellings. The, um, in total, the site has gone from an allocation of uh, half a hectare in the neighbourhood plan to two and a half hectares. Um, and we believe that that would have capacity for around 35 to 40 dwellings. Now, if we took a, um, a capacity, a fairly conservative capacity of 20 dwellings to the hectare for a gross density, that would, uh, the site could theoretically accommodate around 50 dwellings. Um, in our view, an appropriate capacity for the whole site would be in the order of about 35 to 40, where it would be a density of around 16 dwellings to the hectare. This would achieve a low density scheme in keeping with the existing character and layout of the area. It would be set within substantial landscaping and it would assimilate sensitively into its context. I'll come on to how this can be achieved as we um, have tested the capacity in a moment. Within the report which accompanies the working draft local plan, Kiln 9 is identified as having a suitability rating of four. Uh, it refers to it being within the AOMB uh, as potential constraint and also to the site's proximity to the grade two listed old inn which is, uh, it says, 28 metres to the east of the site and a, a potential adverse heritage impact. Dealing with these points in turn, um, we believe the, the site potentially warrants a, a higher rating. In terms of AONB, yes, Kilmington, the site is within the East Devon AONB, but so is the majority of Kilmington and any expansion of the village will really require development to go into the AOMB. Um, the site is relatively flat and visually contained. You've got good screening to the, along the northern boundary. And the northern boundary of the site is the northern is the for the northern extent of that AOMB. So when you go the other side of the A35, you're outside of the East Devon AOMB. And the Black Downs AOMB is further over to the uh, east. So as you look back into the AOMB, existing vegetation provides substantial screening and you only get filtered views of the development set against the backdrop of the existing um, village. The neighbourhood plan landscape appraisal acknowledges that the site has very limited intervisibility with countryside within the wider East Devon AOMB. So it's a well-contained and uh, con enclosed site in that regard. And it doesn't have any landscape features in itself, which are particularly characteristic of the AONB and would be worthy of retention. And as I've mentioned already, the neighbourhood plan requires a 10 metre landscape buffer and strategic planting, and that could be extended across the full frontage of the um, A35 under Kilmo 9. In terms of the heritage impact, uh, in, in our um, view, having measured the distance from the northeastern corner of the site to the edge of the Old Inn, the distance is more like 65 metres at its very closest point uh, from, from the listed building. And there's a substantial belt of mature trees along that boundary. So intervisibility with the Old Inn is very limited. And that landscaping also provides a good setting for the listed building. Um, in our view, the site has the capacity to accommodate development without that impacting upon the listed building. And as part of the proposals, we could introduce additional planting um, and set back the development uh, from that boundary if that was deemed necessary to further safeguard that setting. Um, so in summary, in terms of the the site's rating. We believe the site is a good site. That's already been recognised in terms of the site's 
partial allocation within the neighbourhood plan. Uh, any constraints identified so far are minor. Uh, and uh, so um, there's limited infrastructure costs associated with delivering the site. Coming on to the initial concept, we have looked at the site's capacity and, and how that might uh, form a, a layout for the site. Um, we've looked at accommodating the buffer along the A35, establishing strategic planting, retaining the existing planting on site, and also providing potential for pedestrian cycle connections into the village, which is a particular um, aspiration of the parish council to uh, deliver more pedestrian and cycle connections, which are off-road. As I said before, the total site is two and a half hectares, and this proposal would look to deliver a developable area of about 0.9 hectares, with the remainder given over for uh, strategic planting, landscaping, and open space. So here's the proposed layout. Um, as you can see, there is an access road coming across from the east to the west. Uh, there's no through route into the existing developed areas. Again, very much a firm aspiration of the parish council not to have uh, any new through routes. Um, and they say the, the village is very, a particular characteristic is cul-de-sacs um, within Kilmington. So very much looking to um, utilize that um, in this layout. You've got the landscape buffer to the north, pedestrian, uh, and cycle connections through onto the A35 shown there. Uh, there's allowances in for attenuation basins uh, along the southern boundary and another pedestrian and cycle connection which could come through onto Meadowbank Residential Road to the south or, or there may be potential also to create connections through into the public open space to the, to the east. Um, here we've proposed to the south a, a good buffer with orchard planting um, and looking back at historic maps, uh, orchard planting was um, characteristic of Kilmington, uh, so it would be good to reintroduce that. Um, and as before, you know, all the boundary planting would be retained as far as possible uh, and the um, hedgerow that divides the fields currently would be retained as far as possible. So within these parcels of development, we'd be, in our view, that could uh, achieve around 35 to 40 dwellings quite comfortably. Um, I, over to you for any questions, really. I also have um, Neil Gillings from Placeland has joined us virtually, so he'll be able to answer any questions as well. Thank you. Thanks very much for that. Um, just a question for me. I know that you put a lot of heavy emphasis on the neighbourhood plans and as well as listing the quantum of um, the actual types of houses which you'd like to seek to come forward. Obviously, the, what you're proposing is a slightly enlarged number. Would you be keeping to the same ratios of market housing, self-build and affordables that you suggested at the start? The, the ones that I suggested at the start came from the neighbourhood plans. So those are the ones within the draft policy that they're, they're looking to achieve as the proportions across those 14. I think if we were looking at a larger site, um, obviously the affordable housing uh, would align with the local plan policy. Um, in terms of self-build, I know that the parish council are looking to have, I think, around about 10 self-build plots around the village. I'm assuming there's going to be an upper limit to how many of those there's going to be a demand for in, in the village. So that may put a, a limit on the number of, of those units that you'd want to see at those plots available. Um, so I suspect there would be some movement on the overall mix. It's very early days, obviously. Um, I don't know if Neil's got any other thoughts on that. He's able to join. Hello, thank you very much. Uh, no, I'd echo um, Lucy's comments, really. That was just for information of what's in the neighbourhood plan, and we'd be guided by 
um, the affordable percentage that came through in the adopt local plan uh, when that review takes place. Thanks very much. Councillor Moulding, can we come to you, please? Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, site I know well, just up the road from me, living in Axminster, or at least living just outside Axminster. But um, uh, attending Kilmington Parish Council meetings, as I did previously when I was a Devon County Councillor, the site that you can see on the plan there uh, off George Street uh, was an exception site. And that was an exception site because um, uh, the, the Kilmington Parish Council was very much aware that um, there were young people in the village that needed homes. Uh, and um, as I understand it, the only um, uh, proviso from Kilmington a parish council was that an exception site um, would be permitted, but nothing more than that. So can I assume that you've had extensive conversations with Kilmington Parish Council to en enable you to bring forward this um, these parcels of land? We have um, had discussions with Kilmington Parish Council, yes. Um, and as um, I said at the start of the presentation, this area... Uh, roughly here, this L shape is identified and supported by the parish council through their neighbourhood plan. Um, so the, we've had discussions regarding bringing forward that area of the site, and they're aware of the ownership uh, and the desire to bring forward this area of the site as well. Um, uh, but of course, their plan only goes to 2031. Uh, and this plan's looking to go beyond. So it's looking at that longer term phase delivery of development, um, which could be delivered across the, the wider site. Uh, Chair, can I ask about um, um, highways interventions? Of course you can, Councillor Molden, come back in as much as you like. Because um, uh, although I see the access again is off George Lane, uh, with the numbers anticipated for this site, um, the majority of those uh, new residents will wish to uh, do their shopping at Miller's Farm Shop, which is on the other side of the main um, A30 or A35 rather. And uh, uh, it's obvious that um, that to cross that road, which is a very, I think the, the um, uh, speed limit was reduced to 50 miles an hour a few years ago, but it's a dangerous road. And I, I would only assume that you've talked with Highways England to ensure that um, uh, either there'll be some reductions in speed or there will be some arrangements for new residents to cross the road. Um, if, if I could come in there, Councillor Moulding, and through, through you, Chair. Um, we, we haven't had any discussions with uh, um, Highways England, though have engaged with Devon County, Jerry Upfield at Devon County. Um, we are aware of um, a previous application on the old inn where the Highways England Highways Agency at the time didn't object as it is a is a is a trunk road. Of course, that would that would follow the detail of that would follow. And, and absolutely, we would look at highway safety as a key part of bringing forward any proposal. And if any um, improvements were required, then we, we would have to uh, look at that seriously. If I may also add, um, in speaking to the parish council, I understand there is um, a desire to reduce the speeds further along the A35 and that they're in discussions with Highways England regarding reducing it at least to 40 miles an hour with some average speed cameras along there. So that's part of a wider strategy, obviously extends far beyond our, our site. Um, and I think as part of that, they're also looking at putting in a pedestrian crossing um, closer to where the old inn is, I believe. Thank you very much. Um, I don't see any other members wishing to speak. Does any other members have any questions? No, okay. I'd just like to thank Neil and Lucy for your time today. Very much appreciate you coming down to, to present to us. I know it is appreciated by the, by the mm -hmm. membership. So thank you thank for your you. time. Thank you very much for having us. Thank, thank you thank all. You.
Bye. Mr. John, can we come back to you for your, your final presentation of the day? Of course. Thank you, Chair, members. Um, so this is the site uh, land adjacent to North Star in Otterton. Um, if I can have the presentation up, please, Wendy. Sorry, I'm just preparing it. <clears throat> Thank you. And on to the constraints <laughs> and opportunities. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot for that. Um, so th this, this is the site. You can see the site um, outlined in that thin red line. Um, just to give you another bit of orientation then. So this the site abuts onto 4th Street <laughs> and basically for, see the, the spine of 4th Street running, running uh, northeast, southwest there. It's towards the northern part of the village, but it is within the village. Um, and you see, um, you can see the former, uh, I forget, I can't remember whether it's actually still operational or not, but there's the North Star Engineering Works immediately to the north of the site. And then beyond that, um, my recollection is that there's a, a recent um, exceptions-led affordable housing scheme has been built out um, uh, for an affordable housing provider. Um, you've got houses, uh, obviously, on the southern side as well. Um, <clears throat> so the site, effectively, uh, it's 0.4 hectares of land. Uh, effectively, it's an infill plot on the road frontage uh, within the, the, the built-up area of the village. Um, it's subject to a little bit of constraint, it, like everywhere else, not so it's subject to AOMB. Um, the front of the site, again, like all the other residential properties, uh, forms part of the, the flood zone, um, which runs kind of on or along the road. Um, and, and the land rises gently uh, uh, to the west, uh, and there's various trees at the hedgerow on the boundary. And you can kind of see that... Um, those features on the constraints and opportunities analysis uh, plan. Um, so, so locationally, it's an infill site. It's in a, in a service village, uh, and it has the potential ability to um, be a relatively straightforward uh, housing site uh, or, um, uh, in the village in a way which is, you know, relatively uncomplicated. Could I have the illustrative layout, please, Wendy? So this is the, um, the scheme that is, um, has been worked up. Um, and you can see the most obvious point is it's set back um, so that it avoids the, the flood zone. Um, and that's consistent with the approach taken elsewhere. Um, and the, uh, the six units, um, six dwellings that are proposed um, are therefore outside that area. Um, but importantly, from a character and landscape point of view, um, that doesn't push the, um, the development any further sort of outside the, the building line. You can see, therefore, the back of the development uh, would, would run neatly along the same building line as the existing uh, built form of the village. So it hopefully wouldn't be discordant in any way um, as a result of that. Um, there's opportunities, therefore, um, to um, address the landscape character, protect the, the hedgerows which form the perimeter of the site, um, and to provide um, six units. Uh, clearly, uh, it's on the edge of a conservation area, so the, the design characteristics at the planning application stage would have to be um, in the right way, but that's something which I think is probably achievable through detailed design in, in due course. And you have a nice um, landscape buffer uh, as well as a flood zone buffer on that, that eastern side. Um, Putting um, some dwellings there, you know, won't generate any adverse issues to do with, um, you know, neighbouring amenity and so on and so forth. Um, that's really all I have to say on this for the moment. Any questions? Thank you very much. Do we have any questions from the committee? Councillor Pratt, we come to you, please. Thank you. Um, the level of the uh, site where you propose to put the dwellings, what level uh, relationship does that have with the, the brook, which uh, causes the flooding? Yeah, so it is higher, that, that land 
if you imagine this is a this is a valley, isn't it? Um, and you have the stream running down the, the bottom of the valley. So on either side, the land gently rises up, uh, and it's not it's particularly steep at all um, further up. But the, the the built development is on is outside the flood zone because of that change in level. I, so what that actually is it in, in meters? I don't know what that is. The mm. Vertical height. But obviously, you you would obtain a flood risk assessment. Yes. Of that. Yes. Um, and the the second part, it it is in an AOMB, and uh, there are trees. In the site there, I can see. Um, are yes. those the uh, existing trees and mm -hmm. hedgerows, or are those what you're going to put in the site? So you've got um, you've got hedgerows around the site at the moment. I think on the northern and western sides primarily, they would stay. Um, the trees that you can see, effectively, it's a field. It's just a um, it's just an agricultural field at the moment. And my recollection is there's no trees on the interior of the site. So th th I think that's the architect showing illustratively, you know, that you can do some additional landscaping on it. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Does anyone else have any other further questions? No, okay. Okay. Still, thank you very, thank much, you very for, much for, for all of your presentations today. Okay, really, no problem. <laughs> taken up most of your time that's okay my pleasure thanks very much members thank you bye-bye um what we're gonna have to do now is take a short break uh, just while we wait for the last presentation of the day um if we can try and get the the presenter on the phone uh, and try and get him into the meeting early we will we will do but um we have yeah we've sailed ahead very quickly unfortunately. Um, so if we leave it for 10 minutes, we rejoin at 25-2 and hopefully we can get the last presenter on. Do you want me to get my guitar note, Dan? It, I'd prefer if you whistled. So. <laughs> <laughs> Try mine. <laughs> yeah, see you all back at 25-2.
members we're still waiting on the the presenters uh, at this present time so just bear with us as we just try and get them into the meeting So, Chair, where is your peacock suit? Sorry? <laughs> he could pop into peacocks in Exmouth and get one. <laughs> so, uh, Paul Weller sang about um, peacock suit. Peacock suit. S-U-I-T. That's it. As in the clothes. And you look the sort of man to carry it off, Chair. Not that I'm buttering you up or anything. Well, I hope you're not buttering him up, John. <laughs> not in a public meeting, John. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> do you even know who Paul Weller is, Chair? You might do. The jam? Some of oh, us are old oh, enough. Man, Ooh. Good man. Ooh. I feel so young. <laughs> You might feel it, you might feel it, uh, leader, but um, whether you are is another matter. Well, listen, mate, there's only one of us stroking a five foot white beard. <laughs> Members, just so you're aware, you are still live on YouTube. Oh, thank you, Chair. Mr. Cave, um, I can see you're in the meeting. Do you Hello. know if. Hello, do you know if Mr, is it Yeats or Yates? Dan Yates, I need to get in touch with him. Are you, are you, um, because we're a little I've bit I've emailed early. him. Yeah, um, we've left a message and I've emailed him. Um, and also James Tizard as well. Yeah, I think he's I, expected. Can you just give me one second? I will try and get hold of them. Yes, of course. Thank you. Thanks. So, members, with that in mind, can we look to, to reconvene at quarter two, just so that that gives some time for the presenters to actually get into the room? So we'll come back at quarter two. Thank you.
Let's remember it's now quarter two. Mr. K, have you managed to, to get hold of Mr. Yates? I've managed to get hold of Dan and Jeremy Smith, who are both joining, and they should be with us very shortly. Um, however, we are struggling possibly to get hold of, Je of, of James Tizard. Um, we've not we've not managed to to hear from yet him yet. Are you able? So are you, are you saying that they'll be with us any second now, or are you able? Yeah, to yeah. Both them? both Dan both Dan and and Jeremy um, should be logging in any second now. I've, I've I've told them we're to start at quarter two, but James, we are we are struggling to get hold of. I'm afraid. Yates has arrived. I've just Good afternoon, Mr. Yates. Good afternoon. Are we still waiting for, for one other person or are, are we able to begin? Just checking, I can see George. Um, I'm not sure if James Tizard is, has already joined or not. Um, no. In, in which case, I think we're just waiting on one more. Um, I mean, James was going to join for the questions and answers at the end. So it might be that if James hasn't joined already that we could start with the presentation um, and James can join at the end. Yeah, if we could do that, that would be great. You, all the committees here. So whenever you're ready. Have you, Jay, um, Dan? Have you heard from Jeremy? I did just speak to him. He said he was joining. Um, yes, that's fine. I think Jeremy's not involved in the actual presentation, so I think, like I said, we can we carry on. Fantastic. Okay, I think you've been made co-host, so you can share your screen whenever. Okay, bear with me, I'll just bring the presentation up. Can you let me know if you can see that? Not yet. No, currently not. Yeah, we can see that now. Thank you. OK, so you can see the presentation and you can hear me OK. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, well, good afternoon, councillors. Uh, thank you for allowing us time to present today. Uh, I'm Dan Yates uh, from Saddles, and I'll be presenting this afternoon on behalf of Land Value Alliances. Um, I'll be presenting uh, at George Shield we've already mentioned will I'll bring in early in the presentation just to uh, to give a very quick few words from a landowner's perspective um, and then I'll, I'll continue with the remainder of the presentation um, and James Tizard from Land Value Alliances will come in at the end when we come to questions. So the the, the land at Furs Hill, uh, just, just a, a, a brief overview of Sibri in the context of the site to begin with, um, just to start with uh, clarification really. So the red line on, on the plan that you can see, you will notice is larger than the site, which is currently in the working draft plan, uh, which is just the Northern field uh, currently. Um, there are reasons I'll, I'll come on to shortly as to why we're presenting today on uh, a larger land extent, um, but just to just show that the overall site within the context of, of the village and the proximity to local services and facilities, including the, the, the local school, the news agents, uh, recreation facilities, etc. Um, and also just to point out the, the white dotted line 
line at the bottom is, uh, and I'll come on to this shortly, is, is just showing the Devon County County uh, planned cycle multi-use path route uh, from Sidford to Sidbury. So that is uh, what we'll talk about as a phase one um, that takes you up to Hillside. So just, just to give you a, a sort of a quick context really of the sites uh, within Sidbury. In terms of LVA and the estate, I'll just run through a few points and then bring George in if, if that's okay. Um, so the, the land is being uh, progressed jointly between Sibley Valley Estate and Land Value Alliances, uh, LVA, uh, working together on exciting opportunity to bring forward proposals for an exemplary low carbon residential scheme. Um, LVA are the Southwest based land promotion company, um, they have decades of experience within the residential and commercial sectors. Um, and as a promoter, LVA are not bound by corporate design policies or designs uh, are tied rather to one particular house builder. Uh, their objective is, is generally to seek high quality outline consents, often following allocations through the plan process and then identifying the most developer for the, the both the site and the local community. Um, if George would like to just come in and say a few words. Oh yeah, thank you. Um, good afternoon, I'm, I'm George Cave and thank you for your time this afternoon. Um, since the passing of my father in uh, 2018, I have taken over the running at Sibri Manor Estate and have continued the good relationship that we've had with LVA, the promoter of this site. And we chose to work with LVA to make use of their high quality design and planning expertise, but principally because of their strong sustainability credentials and track record to deliver zero carbon homes in the Southwest region. The site and surrounding land is owned by my family and has been for many years. And I'm at the start now of my own journey as custodian of quite a large portion of the Sid Valley. And I'm excited to be here with you today to share LVA's proposal for a sensitive and sustainable new residential development, which importantly incorporates uh, the long awaited phase two stage of the much desired Sid Ford to Sid Free uh, cycle path, um, which builds upon the work I've been conducting with Devon County Council to progress the delivery of phase one of this route across land also owned by our family. Um, so yeah, very, ha very happy to be here today and thank you for your time. I'll pass you back now to Dan. So I mentioned at the beginning, and, and George has just touched on it, um, the, the Devon County Council work that is ongoing um, in terms of the planned cycle connection. Uh, I think it's just important just to mention that one of the main reasons we are looking at this opportunity and progressing it as a, a larger site area, uh, and we're showing an initial sort of op, uh, sketch option on the right hand side there and how it, it sort of ties into to the, to the links. Um, it is to very much to, 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 to move away from what is currently the working plan and to explore an opportunity with Devon County Council um, for the way in which this site can help to facilitate and deliver phase two of the cycle route. So phase one is shown in the white dotted line. Um, and if phase two doesn't come forward, it would drop down to Chapel Street from Hillside. And as you may, or you will be aware that, you know, that stretch of Chapel Street between Hillside and the main part of, of the village um, is challenging and something that has come out of uh, resident consultation um, from Devon County Council's work already is, is a desire to, to explore a, a safer off-road off -road route um, and, and to avoid having to, to use that stretch of Chapel Street for both cyclists and pedestrians. Um, so that, that's, that's at the heart of the scheme, that's at the heart of what we're trying to do and, and uh, you know, the joint work with Devon County Council so far um, has, has you know, it, it's very much tied to that programme. So what, what, what they are currently looking at at the moment for phase one is, is pre-app this spring public consultation on, on that route over the summer and a planned application submission for phase one in spring next year um, but there's very much a desire not just like I said to deliver phase one but to explore the whole routes you know a comprehensive routes all the way up to the heart of the village 
Um, that's that's at the heart of what Devon County Council are trying to do, and, and the joint work is is exploring how our sites can facilitate that. Um, so, so why Sibri? I think mean, touched on some of these points already. Sibri as a sustainable uh, service village within uh, the adopted plan already, based on uh, the range of services and facilities that exist um, and I think what we what we would like to explore is, is a, a new community which can enhance the facilities already there and sort of help support those businesses in the village um, but bring with it the benefits that would come with uh, a scheme to include that new cycle link uh, a pedestrian link. Um, we are thinking very carefully about the uh, the context within the site 60 a and b designation um so the whole village and all of the land down to, to sidmouth uh, falls within the a and b um i think we're very much trying to to explore an opportunity that can deliver a scheme and address the local housing needs but also conscious of the the designation and how to to plan a scheme which is sensitive uh, to that designation and I'll come on to that in a bit more detail in, in a second um, but also in, in the working draft already there is there is reference to the lack of dedicated footpaths and connections within Sibri and, and reference to the to the challenging stretch of Chapel Street um, the A375 so there's an opportunity here with, with this site uh, to, to help to deliver those enhancements, those improvements, um, and to deliver, deliver, you know, housing alongside lots of the other uh, uses and benefits that come with it, and you know, pedestrian cycle infrastructure. Uh, just briefly on the site itself, so the, the plan on the right hand side is uh, currently included in the working draft. So we've obviously shown you the, the the extent of the site we're looking at, the the, the current site shaded pink on the right hand side uh, is, is referred to as approximately 38 dwellings in terms of you know, site capacity. Um, I'll come on to the, the, the concept master plan in, in a second but we'll be looking at 40 to 50 in terms of scale so spread across a larger uh, extent of area but not necessarily increasing the scale significantly above what is already identified. Um, the, the various opportunities to explore on-site uh, delivery of, of facilities and infrastructure, um, you know, open space, we're explore, exploring biodiversity opportunities and, and increasing biodiversity in that gain. Um, and I think in terms of Sibri itself, in order to deliver the housing need or to address the housing need, it, it's the, you know, the site that would, um, would outscore any others and it, it's the most suitable uh, in, in that situation. I think it's uh, it, it, that there are clear key merits uh, and benefits and we've listed those on the left hand side. So the, the, the opportunity to explore you know, a highly sustainable scheme, low carbon scheme, um, not just looking at market housing, but affordable housing opportunities for self build as well. Um, and I'll come on to the plan in a second, but the, the, the larger site area really gives us the opportunity, particularly on the upper slopes, which are maybe less suitable for build developments to, to really think about biodiversity enhancements, wildlife enhancements, uh, and to achieve the biodiversity net gain objectives. Um, but I think a lot of the, the sort of the key benefits would be focused around the connections and the opportunity to provide those off road pedestrian cycle infrastructure connections that are linked to what Devon County Council are trying to achieve as well. In terms of site analysis, the, the, the plan at the bottom, I think we're trying to show how the site would sit from views from the east uh, against the context of the existing uh, built development. So on the left hand side, you can see the hill, hillside element of, of Sibri and on the right hand side starts the main village. Um, the, the two sort of green shaded areas uh, will come on to on, on the master plan on the next slide, but that would be where the, the build development would, would, would take place. And there's an opportunity in the middle of the site to, uh, to provide you know, open space, green infrastructure, places for people to, to spend time and sit. And, and the red dotted line um, it is showing where the potential cycle pedestrian link would cut through and join the two parts of the settlement. Um, the green dotted line is just showing the top extent of where the builds development could 
could fall. So it's an opportunity to really deliver something which is in keeping and consistent with uh, the extent of, of built development, conscious of the, the AOMB designation. Um, but obviously on the right hand side, we've listed the, the constraints that we are considering um, and, and you know, very much thinking about the sensitivity of the sites in, in terms of the emerging design. So we have shown a couple of options, master plan, concept master plan options. Uh, the reason for showing both of them is because we have spoken already to officers at East Devon District Council and Devon County Council about the, the conceptual master plan. Uh, and the Three minutes left. The opportunity to deliver development, but also, as you can see from the master plan, those, those green areas, as you if you move up the slopes um, at the top of the hill, opportunities to really think about, you know, biodiversity enhancement, green spaces, and 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 so twofold really. You're trying to keep, to limit development to the lower parts of the slope, um, and then opportunities to to really maximise the biodiversity um, opportunities on the upper parts of the of the slope. So the two options include a couple of different options for the for the cycle link dotted in red. Um, but, uh, you know, a, a big emphasis really on the opportunity to, to create a walkable neighbourhood. So it's, you know, close to the heart of the village, but will provide those linkages, not just to up to Sibri, which would benefit new and existing residents, but also down to Sidford and to Sidmouth. And Sidmouth, which offers, uh, you know, a bigger range of services and facilities and employment opportunities. So, you know, providing those sustainable links which are not there at the moment um 40 to 50 homes is what we're sort of showing conceptually in the master plan so again you know spreading the development across the site rather than focusing on just the northern fields um and i think there are sort of lots of benefits in, in in doing that not least the potential to provide a continuous safe and overlooked link from hillside up to uh, first hill um so a, a you know a, a, a safe and pleasant link that people would want to use uh, again avoiding chapel streets um, and then really maximizing the the green space opportunities of a pocket park in the middle of the sites um potential for for seating you know orchard natural play space um and uh, as i mentioned you know a nice nice sort of overlooked route through the, sides, the uh the walking and cycling phase two opportunity i was going to take questions i mean i'm happy if it helps for questions to go back and keep us on the the master plan slides um if it helps with, with questions but uh yeah that that concludes the presentation Thank you very much for that. Really appreciate it. Um, Councillor Dune, you want to come in first? They're doing loud and sorry. Uh, thank you, Chair. I didn't recognise my name for a minute. <laughs> sorry. That's, 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 all right. that's all right. I, I, I forgive you. Um, so uh, I have I have four sets of questions. Is that a, 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 can I start and you stop me when you think I'm droning on if, if you will i'll interject as soon as you start rambling okay right so um the the first the first question i suppose comes comes up uh, that um if i if i look at um 14th of december committee papers and i look at page 56 and i look at sidham 10 uh, then then um what has just been explained was that um what is in what was in the papers then isn't quite the site as as I'm looking at it now before the site was long if you like long and thin now this is going to be spread as, as fat and wide uh, across three three fields rather than in in one so that's the that's the first thing secondly yes uh, Sidbury is isolated for anybody who doesn't uh, have a car or is able to use the hourly bus service. So there is a desperate need for a multi-use path that Devon County Council are talking about, and have been talking about, frankly, for five or six years. Um, it, the the multi-use path um, goes, uh, as Devon County Council are proposing in two phases, 
one up until F Hillside. And Chair, I don't know if the uh, presenter, uh, Mr. Tis Tisdale, um, Tisdale um, would like to pull up um, the, um, which, which, which one would it be? Uh, the next one, perhaps, is there another? I think it went on. There's another slide. No. That 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 one. So if you take if you take the red line there at the bottom where the arrow is, the bottom uh, arrow in the red line, that is that is um, hillside, and that is the very edge of the of the village as you come in from Sidmouth. So that the, the intention is cycle path comes from Sid Ford in through fields into um, hillside there. And phase one stops at that point. And I have made the, uh, the argument very strongly that there is no point having a cycle path that ends there because uh, they, people then need to then get out onto the main A375 and do battle with the traffic, which is uh, a danger. So, so this is obviously facilitating the cycle path then going through the proposed development into the existing first hill at the top uh, of the uh, of the the map there uh, and the top arrow head. So that then takes it into the village. Uh, all 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 well and good. Um, the concern the concerns I've got uh, are then. If we look at the development, the master plan um, presentation there. So some concerns I've got at the moment need, that need to be answered are the bottom field there, um, which has got the, on, in, in the site, it's got the two tracks coming into one. They come into Ebden Lane, which is a single track lane, which then takes you down onto the A375. That 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 I, I just flag up. The uh, the other issue then becomes the other field. It comes straight out onto the busy A three seven five, and and I presume at some point the the highway. Councilor Loudon, we, we need to be asking questions. I'm afraid. I do beg your pardon, mm. Chair. I'm sorry. We need I'm to go back and forward a little bit. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So so uh, are, are, are the, are, is is the proposal uh, that uh, there would be um greater greater access onto the a375 from both these fields so that's a question there and um would the presenter agree that if we didn't have phase two of the cycle path into this uh into the far field there by furs hill that that the cycle path would basically be be a pointless exercise, um, and and I'm just wondering how much how much use on the site will there be for the diversity that was being talked about, i.e., allotments, uh, a pond, and talked about an orchard. I think things like that, um, because that certainly would be would be necessary. And what is what protection will there be for the Grade Two listed um, Furs Hill Farm? that uh, is, is there um, now bounded by two sides of the development and on one side by the A375. Thank you, Chair. Thanks very much for that, Councillor. Mr Yates, do you think you could cover off just a few of those questions, please? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, I'll just take them in turn. I think in terms of the access at the bottom that we're showing, um, you know, option one is showing a, a sort of direct route through to Hillside and um, that, that, that general arrangement, um, you know, we do need to do more work there. We, you know, we haven't by, by no means have shown the detail of that. It, we, you know, the conceptual master plan, um, it, you know, it isn't yet informed by all the detail, but that is going to be very much a focus of how that arrangement will work. And the discussions with the De with Devon County Council so far, far have been about the options rather than agreeing one solution. So it's an ongoing uh, ongoing discussion with them. We're very keen to continue working with Devon County Council and East Devon um, about the best approach for that. But we are very mindful of, of, of that. Um, in terms of connections to the A375, I think that's all part of the, the sort of the general highway discussion and the, the highway solution. Um, again, what we're showing 
is not necessarily fixed. I think we've got, you know, an access further up into the first part of the site, but, you know, the, the general highway strategy and, and making sure that what we do provide is safe and secure and providing the right connections is, is going to be key. Um, in terms of it, you know, if only phase one came forward and not phase two, I think that that's what we the message we were trying to get across in the presentation really you know that that's it's very much at the heart of the scheme and why we've been working so far with devon county council because from the, the county council's point of view but also from consultation with the local residents it, it's very clear that you know we that we, we don't want just phase one you know there is a need for phase two to bring people into the heart of the village um and you know the, the 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 outcome otherwise would would bring you to a situation where you know you are still having to negotiate that that tricky part of Chapel Street, which is no different to the existing situation. Um, you know, phase one, yes, would deliver you know a good stretch of off roads uh, and safe uh, a safe route up to Hillside, but it's it's critical that the whole route is delivered. Um, so we've been working with the county council to try to deliver that 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 second phase. Um, and just briefly on the on the open space and listed points, so open space opportunities. Again, the conceptual master plans by no means show details or options, or, or, but but I think at the moment it's fair to say everything is on the table. I think we've did the wider consultation and engagement strategy um, that we'll be embarking on. You know, we do need to talk to the local community. We do need to talk to to stakeholders, and we'll be working with with everyone to explore. The right types of open space uh, and biodiversity enhancements and opportunities to make sure we maximize those green opportunities um, and the listed building uh, we need to do more work but at the moment i think part of the reason for including that pocket park is to give you that separation um, i think you know when, when you look at the master plan we will need to think about the the you know the, the housing we're showing in the in the northern field i think it, it's you know respecting the setting of that listed farmhouse and that's certainly recognised. So what we're showing is, is sort of reflecting that, but there's more work to do. Thank you very much. Mr. Freeman, can I bring you in at this point? Because it seems like it's slightly different to what was proposed in into the actual HELA process. Ed, are you available? I think it came up that he'd left the meeting. I'm not sure if that was by choice. I don't know. He is he is in, um, but obviously he's having a few technical issues. Okay, we'll come back to it. Councillor Pratt, we'll come to you, please. You're on mute, Councillor Pratt. Sorry, sorry, Chair. Can you hear me? You can indeed, whenever you're ready. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Yates, uh, I wonder if you could ask, answer a couple of questions. The first one relates to the restraint with the AONB. Um, can you just give me some indication of what you are proposing to do to uh, in, in, to deal with the deal with the AONB uh, views from the other side of the valley? And you look across the valley towards this site. There are an awful lot of houses on this site, which I think are going to be seen. Yeah, sure. I think I touched on briefly in the, in the presentation, but I think that that's yes. why at the moment the focus is very much on the lower slope. So, um, I mean, orientation wise, um, you know, the, 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 the sort of the Western parcels that we're showing, um, we recognise that, you know, it, it's not appropriate to look at build developments um, further up the slopes and I think you know focusing on development on the lower slopes tying into where you've already got existing housing to the north and the, and the south would, would just help to soften that and I think that there's more we can explore in terms of planting and, uh, and, and buffers and, and you know, more you know landscape and visual impact, impact work to do um, but I think conceptually speaking we, we tried to, to address those views in particular by trying to keep development on, on, on the lower slopes um, but yeah I think it's you know it's, it's recognized that you know where you go in Sibri you're going to have to deal with the AOMB and then think about how you can sensitively design you know whichever site you might be exploring around Sibri so I think it's um, it's a really good opportunity but very much recognized that you know we need to work within those constraints and, and that's certainly something that it will be at the heart of, of, of this site. 
how, I've got the uh, master plan in front of me at the moment and uh, how much of the uh, vegetation there is existing and how much will need to be planted by the developer? That's a, that's a really good question, actually. And it's not, we're not really distinguishing between existing and proposed. Um, and I think if you were looking at an application drawing, you know, you would distinguish between that. I think there's, there's we, we, we are not proposing to remove any um, existing sort of trees or hedgerows within the site. There may need to be some removal just to allow sites um, access. So where we're showing a vehicular access from Chapel Street at the top, um, and also from hillside but within the site, we would be looking to retain all existing vegetation. And, and I think a lot of what we're showing there is, is, um, is, is additional planting as well, particularly around the pocket park in the centre. Um, but yeah, that, that, that further detail needs to come. And I think, again, it, I think it very much needs to be informed by consultation with the officers uh, um, just to make sure that the landscaping strategy and the approach is, uh, you know, is we agree the right solution. So you're proposing 40 to 50 new homes. Um, do you think that is too many for the uh, situation we have in the, uh, the roadway going through uh, the village, the A375? That is a very busy road and perhaps 40 or 50 homes is too many. I appreciate you've got costs to consider. I do appreciate that. But uh, 40 to 50 homes? Yeah, again, really good question. I, I think what we're trying to do is, is think carefully about the balance of, of you know, the opportunity to provide more homes than currently in the working plan. So I think 38 is shown for the, for the top field. I mean, that is condensing them into, into one field um, rather than spreading them. So looking at a slightly higher quantum, but I think it's it's the opportunity to, to bring forward a slightly higher scale of development. Yes, we'll need to, to sort of think about the constraint to manage the impacts, but the opportunity to bring forward a, a slightly higher scale of development and a larger site that will bring with it all the additional benefits that wouldn't necessarily come with SIDM 10 as it stands. Um, so, you know, it's very clear that you, you know, there's an opportunity to live a much better landscape enhancements and a landscape strategy and biodiversity enhancements by exploring um, a wider, uh, larger land take um, in terms of sort of financial contributions towards local education, um, that would come with a greater scale of housing. So, you know, more support going towards local ser services and facilities. So I, I completely agree. It's, it's, a, it, it's a consideration and something we need to, to, to think about carefully, you know, what, what is the right scale of development? Um, but I think there's an opportunity to, to bring forward more benefits with the scale of housing we're showing rather than focusing on what is currently in the working draft plan. Yes. Um, coming on then to affordable housing, uh, we've got on, on a proposal of 40 to 50 homes, something like 50% affordable. Uh, Sidbury does need affordable homes. Um, what are your comments on that? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, if we're showing 40 to 50, we'd be looking at you know, the policy compliance position, for example, as it stands, you know, recognising that we need to see what the emerging policy uh, is going to show in due course, but that would be delivering, you know, 20, 20 to 25 um, affordable homes. And then, like, like I said in the presentation, there's an opportunity to explore different types of affordable, whether it's rented products, um, affordable home ownership um, and self-build. Um, so, you know, you can really think about what, what types of affordable housing are needed um, but you know a good proportion of the site would be affordable we work with East Devon uh, the housing team to to make sure we get the right types of houses in the mix um, to, 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 to address the, the need. Thanks very much um, we'll come to this strata iPad I'm assuming that's you Peter all right Peter Faithful over to you um, yes just question about Ebden Lane. Um, is there any plan to improve access onto Ebden Lane or off Ebden Lane uh, coming onto Chapel Lane? Because I think that's quite, it's a very narrow lane. And um, 
the volume of traffic you be sending up and down now, I think would be quite substantial, I would have thought. Okay. Yes. Sorry, was there going to be another question? Do you want me to take that one? That's uh, it for me, thanks. Uh, yeah, I, again, I think the, you know, the the highway strategy, the you know the general movement strategy needs to be at the heart of the master plan. So you know, I think you're right. It's not just about the potential to incorporate the the multi use path, but it's you know what other improvements might be needed. And I think we need to think about Epton Lane and the way that arrangement is going to work. But again, you're bringing forward a site like this with a. a a greater scale of housing. Um, one of one of the options is, is to explore those um, those upgrades and those improvements more so than a much smaller site. So I think there's you know there's, there's more benefits that can come with this type of site that are not just focused around how to how to deliver that multi use path. Thank you. Can I just ask? Because I am just going off the the working draft at the moment. So within that and within the call for sites you only um put forward what's noted as sid 10 um so that's the northern site why now have we got proposals coming through for for two separate sites well they are linked but it's very different to to what's been proposed in the call for sites and what officers have actually um done done the the desktop scoring against Yes, I think it, it's all to do with the discussions with the county council. I think, unfortunately, the, the discussions have been more recent. So I think there's been a, a lag between the work that may have been previously done on site, discussions that would have historically taken place with officers and the, the call for site, SHLA information assessment. So we've had recent discussions with Devon County Council. Um, I, I say we've had recent discussions in, in terms of my involvement, but I know the landowner George has had discussions um, over a much longer period with the county about phase one, um, but the discussions around phase two have only recently fed in, into this. And I mentioned we discussed the master plan with East Devon and, and county council and that included a, a site walkover. Um, that, 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 that's, that has all taken place more recently. So I suspect it's just been the, the, the lag in time really between previous assessments um, and we've not had a chance to catch up yet so um, I think we certainly wanted to take this opportunity to present the latest update the latest thinking rather than just focusing around SIDM 10. Yeah I just don't think that any of this has been related to our offices at East Devon so we are kind of taking this very blindly and it's, it's not been accepted in any of the, the process so far. Um, Ed, are you with us? Do you, do you have any comments you can make on this? Uh, yes, Chair. Hopefully you can hear me now. Yes, we can. Thank you. you. <laughs> Apologies. Having a few technical issues there. Um, yes, I, I, sorry, I've missed most of the last 10 minutes, but um, the point I wanted to make was that I think it is only the northern most part of this site that has been put forward in our call for sites and been through the HELA process and been assessed by officers. Um, I'm not <laughs> at this stage. I'm not sure how we can consider the rest of this site, or indeed if we can, um, unless members wanted to undertake an additional call for sites uh, later in the process to try and address the the shortfall in housing land that we're currently uh, experiencing. But that's a decision for for another day that um, we haven't got to yet. So, just to make the point really that it's only this northern part of the site that we have looked at and and assessed. Um, so. Uh, I, I'd ask members in terms of the purpose of today's meeting to take the rest of the site with a, a, a sort of pinch of salt that that's um, perhaps some way off in the in the future as a, a latter phase that might need to be looked at um, at a later date. But I, I'm struggling to see how we can consider it as part of, of today's work, really. OK, thank you very much. Um, does any other members have any questions? Councillor Skinner, we come to you. Well, I do really, because on that basis, it's quite difficult to, you know, the questioning changes slightly, doesn't it? Because the footpath going through everything, I would assume the scheme is coming forward on the basis of 40 to 50 new homes and it's predicated upon that. And now that's not the case. And so how does everything else stack up? So it's, it's all a little bit difficult to give a call at all, really, other than just let that go and I don't I, I find it quite difficult really to 
I think what what may be the case is obviously we are accepting another report to strategic planning on whether we take forward uh, well there's additional demand for for presentations I think there was 24 or 27 if it is decided by committee that we open up additional days that we invite um, Mr Yates back to just uh, present the northern side and then we can actually look at uh, the proposals for for what's actually been suggested rather than what we've seen today I think that's the most sensible yeah. way forward yeah yeah, I mean, just bear in mind, I mean, I, I don't have a problem with the presentation per se about how it's been put forward. But, it, it, of course, if you've scored it and you've scored just one part of it and not the other part of it, it sort of makes life a little difficult. Cool. Really. Definitely. Um, so just at this time, I would just like to thank Mr Yates uh, and Mr K for, for their time today. Really appreciate it. Um, we'll, I think, end the meeting there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so that brings our meeting to a close. I'd like to thank everyone, including members of the public, for their attendance and look forward to seeing you, yeah, seeing you again soon. Thank you.